project now the meeting open and welcome you to the August meeting of council. The recording of this council meeting will be available to the public on council's website for a minimum period of six months. In accordance with council policy, I will now ask staff to confirm that the recording has commenced. Yes, it has, ma'am. Thank you, Sandy. I'd first of all like to acknowledge that we meet today on the land of the Malakadu people, the traditional custodians of this land. Our Aboriginal people have a deep spiritual connection to country and they've cared for our land and waterways for over 40,000 years in Tasmania. We pay our respects to their customs, their elders, past, present and emerging. Tonight, I have in the chambers with me our General Manager, Emilio Rialli. Yeah. Uh, General Manager, would you like to introduce your staff that are attending this evening? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, tonight in the chamber, we have uh, the Director of Infrastructure Services, Investor, Director of Environment and Development Services, Luke Chu. Director of Community Services will be here a little bit later. She'll be attending um, at about 6.30. Uh, Director of Corporate Services, David Spinks. Uh, joining us online, Mayor, we also have Acting Director of Legal and Governance Services, Michelle Gladhill. Um, as support staff, we have uh, Executive Assistant Sandy Rustell and the ICT Officer, Michael Glazer. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have councillors joining us here in person tonight and also remotely. So in person tonight, um, we have Councillor Newell. Councillor Wilson and also Councillor Prince. And then tuning in remotely, we have Deputy Mayor Doyle, uh, Councillor Gibson, Councillor Campbell, Councillor Lovell and Councillor O'May. Welcome to all of our councillors. Um, item two on the agenda, non-attendance. We have no apologies. We have no leave of absence and no one absent. Um, item three on the agenda is declarations of interest. So I'll just ask our councillors, would anybody uh, like to declare a conflict of interest uh, or a declaration of interest, should I say, for any of the reports that are on tonight's agenda? I'm no, hearing. No. Okay, lovely. I'm hearing silence. So uh, that normally means that no one has any uh, interest. Okay. So item four, confirmation of minutes. Is someone happy to move the minutes for the ordinary meeting held on the 29th of July? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. I actually have Councillor Newell that's moved it. I'll take Councillor um, Prince as a seconder this evening for that one. And I'll put the motion and we'll ask each councillor to state whether they are for or against that motion. Deputy Mayor Doyle? For. Councillor Newell? For. Councillor Gibson? For me. Thank you. Councillor Campbell? For. Councillor Wilson? For. Councillor Lovell? For me. Councillor Prince? For. Councillor O'May? For. And the Mayor is for, that is all councillors present and the motion is carried. Thank you. Item five, there are no legislative items. Item six, there are no urgent matters this evening. And item seven, uh, would any councillor wish to make an announcement this evening? I'm hearing silence. Um, look, I'll just make one announcement and that is, uh, if anybody hasn't heard uh, the announcement of Transformer for the Idabar Railway site was um, announced last week and uh, there should be a development application that will be lodged with Council at the end of this year and that providing everything goes well for that, then the construction will commence next year. Some of you may know that as formerly known as Project X, um, that is a Mona project um, partially funded by the uh, state government and federal government. Okay. So now we move on to item eight, which is public participation time, um, where questions can be answered. The question and answer will be recorded at tonight's meeting. Where questions cannot be answered, the question will be taken on notice and answered at the, sorry, the uh, September council meeting. Question time is limited to 15 minutes, so it's unlikely um, that I'm, I may not be able to get to all the questions tonight. We'll just have to see how we go. 
Public questions were received up to 12 noon today, and all questions and answers have been uploaded to Council's meeting page for public viewing prior to the Council meeting start time. So there are no answers to previous questions taken on notice. Thanks. Lovely. And we'll go straight into tonight's questions. So um, the question from um, Geoffrey Swan, and the question is, Will Council please advise what are the total costs for the recent KPMG Regional Workforce Planning Study being tabled at this 26 August meeting? And do all our councils agree this has been money well spent? Apart from providing our council with a glossy 120 page report quoting demographic and statistical data that is readily accessible through the Australian Bureau of Statistics and other government information sources, Will our Mayor please provide just five, and more if she wishes, hands-on practical outcomes for this report where our Hewan Valley Council staff and or councils will be able to use this data to assist our community? For example, what practical day-to-day -day influence does our Council have over such institutions as our local schools and the Trade Centre, local apprenticeships and employment opportunities in the Valley? And response to you, Mr Swan, is the total cost for the recent KPMG Regional Workforce Planning Study was budgeted for as part of the 2019-20 budget with a total cost of $45,000 plus staff time, which has not been quantified. Local government is in the business of attracting investment into their municipal area and to make every effort to ensure those wanting to live in the municipal area have the opportunity to work in the area they live, generating a strong economy for the area. When this can be achieved and growth occurs, there is more investment from the private sector and investment from state and federal government is easier to attract, delivering an increase in services such as health and schools. This report acts as an enabler and provides us with the facts to escalate our collective needs in the Huon Valley. We know how many new jobs will be required between now and 2040, and these things are as a result of the report. We know the industries that are the growth industries. We know what education services are needed in the Hill and Valley to meet that industry growth and that demand. We have a framework and recommendations that give us and our partners, the educators, the trainers and job facilitators and industry, a clear path to meet those, that growth and demand. We as stakeholders have an evidence-based report written by a reputable company that is recognised by the state and federal government as credible for workforce planning in our region. Without this report, there was nothing available that measured the employment needs and the skill needs of the Huon Valley. And without this report, there is nothing to measure trends, performance and evaluation. Thank you for your question. I'll now move on to Carl Price's question. Has a decision regarding the removal of the sports ground hedge along Wilmot Road been made? If so, has there been any community engagement other than the Hewan News article portraying a small stressed area of the hedge used as the backdrop to support your claim and devalue the significance of the hedge? Has the safety of vehicles and pedestrians been considered when using Wilmot Road on training nights, when sports grounds floodlights could blind their vision? Currently, the hedge protects road users. Um, the answer is the removal of the hedge was included in the 2019 and 2020 annual budget. And design considerations have been ongoing for a number of months, which have taken into consideration what type of safety barrier should be erected, if any, that is, between Wilmot Road users and the sporting, recreation and vehicle parking area. There has been engagement with the local sporting clubs and the police. Engagement with the surrounding property owners of the proposed works and timelines is scheduled to commence in the month of September. Uh, thank you for your question, Carl. Uh, the next question I have is from uh, Dominique Copen. Will the mayor be attending? Uh, will the mayor be in attendance at the upcoming community consultation regarding the feasibility study of Jeffrey's track? Where does the mayor stand on it? Is she in support of it, or will she support upgrading the already established 
Planning Link Road. And my answer is I oh, will be attending both the upcoming community uh, public consultation sessions. I'm waiting for the results of the feasibility study to be made available. And currently, um, the community engagement phase is what's being undertaken. Um, Dominic, I always keep my mind open and either wait for evidence-based information to be given to me, or I ask for it if I don't feel that I have enough information. Once the report is available and findings can be reviewed and considered, I will debate that matter at Council and consider the arguments that are around the table. That also includes reading the submissions received, and I know there's a lot of them so far, and, sur and the survey results from the community engagement phase. Thank you for your question. Okay, I have a, another question from Mr. Jeffrey Swan. Given Council is recommending in tonight's agenda the utilisation of the now closed Visitor Information Centre at 23 to 25 Main Road, Hewerville, to be a space for a Hewan Valley Community Hub project, subject to a vote by our councillors. Question one, um, will our councillors please debate this matter in more detail at this evening's public meeting? Or will the Mayor at least summarise the views of our councillors at the 11 August closed session workshop and tour? And I, I'm happy to summarise that for you. Um, just to state that the workshop was actually a presentation and a quite a detailed presentation, directly followed by a, a tour of both buildings. And because of the, the group, the councillor group disbanding after the tour, there wasn't an opportunity for all of us to sit back around the table and actually debate the proposal. Um, so uh, that's that question. Uh, we have another question, uh, looks like we can fit in, um, from Mr Swan, and it relates to, uh, once again, the Visitor Information Centre. So the question two is, I have read the report in the agenda, but will someone please explain in clearer detail how this space will function in terms of day-to-day -day utilisation? And the response is, you'll find in paragraph 32 of the report, it outlines some of the opportunities um, the establishment of a community hub may create. And these include combination and delivery of community programs that support the delivery of services, activities and promotion for the health and wellbeing, arts and culture, youth and business support. The creation of space for service providers to use, utilise on a semi-regular basis. Creation of a meeting space and shared facilities that multiple user groups, services and programs can use. Delivery of committee network and working group meetings from that venue. And the space will be managed by the Community Services Department through the programming of the space to enable utilisation by other organisations and community groups for activities, service delivery, formal meetings or social activities, and the ongoing use can develop further as community needs and desires are identified and fulfilled. Um, that's all for that particular question. I'll just check to see if I have any others. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody, for your questions. Uh, are there any questions? Oh, well, there are no questions without notice because that's not possible. So, uh, 8.2, there are no deputation addresses to council. Okay. Number nine, there are no petitions. Okay. And so we move straight into the general reports, which is item 10 on the agenda. And General Manager, would you like to speak to your report? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I will um, uh, pick out some of the highlights in uh, the General Manager's operational report. I'll start in the Legal and Governance Services Department. Um, we uh, um, have tonight a uh, report, as you mentioned, about the Hewland Valley Council Regional Workforce Planning um, study that's been completed. So that was completed um, yeah, under the Economic Development Banner, and as you mentioned, does provide a um, fairly wide range of useful information for 
um, industry employers and educators. Uh, the Dover entrance upgrade, which was a, um, a, pro a project that was undertaken from the um, Bushfire Recovery Grant Program, that's been completed. Uh, there are a few minor signage designs just to be progressed and finished off, but um, um, they need to be done before we can officially launch the program, which has to be done by the state government because they were the, um, the grant funders. Um, but this, this um, project has been received quite well by the community in the Dover area. Uh, under um, communications and media, uh, we published a social media campaign for reopening the Port Huon and Signet Sports Centre. And we had a total of 2,588 engagements. And um, I know that we've had a lot of very happy people that they have been reopened to be um, well used again. Um, we had a number of staff attended a Writing Clearly for Local Government workshop with the Tasmanian Training Consortium. On community engagement, we held the first citizenship ceremony since the outbreak of COVID-19 with four conferees at the Glen Hewen Hall on 16th of July. Um, in digital arts, we published the Hewen, Hewen Beings COVID-19 Isolation in Isolation film. Uh, 1,460 people viewed the film on Facebook and uh, we've received some pretty good feedback about that. Um, recreational recreation services are once again sporting facilities reopened on 13th of July. I've that. Um, and um, in infrastructure services, uh, parks and reserves, worth mentioning that the Skinner's Creek walking track has reopened following the completion of the Hewenville stormwater diversion project and has been getting um, a lot of use and um, we've had our parks and reserves teams engaged in finishing off the landscaping that will be ongoing for some time um, but uh, you know there might be some renewal and some additional plantings going on but we've had very good feedback from a lot of the track users about how nice it looks now. Um, facilities maintenance, uh, Signet Town Hall foyer, uh, the Signet Town Hall refurbishment is now complete. Uh, a local contract was engaged to remove the existing vinyl floor coverings. We've sanded and polished the hardwood floorboards. Uh, wall scrapings were also undertaken so that we could um, uh, see the original paint colours so that we could um, use that scheme um, it, so it could be matched when we reapplied um, that scheme with modern paints. Um, we also completed the installation of new light fittings in the town hall's vintage uh, timber township signs uh, are also completed and feedback from the community and regular hall users has been quite positive. So, good. Um, under Environment and Development Services, under Climate Change, Council co-hosted a Tasmanian bushfire and climate round, round table with the Cities Power, Cities Powers Partnership Climate Council. Um, it was an online event. It was going to be a face-to-face -face event and it was going to be hosted by the Hume Valley Council because of our experience with the past bushfires. However, COVID um, prevented us from actually meeting face-to-face. -face. So it was online and it was um, attended by almost 40 officers, predominantly from local and state government. Um, we also had some attendance from some people from the University of Tasmania as well. Um, Waste management, the reuse shop has recorded its highest annual sales revenue on record for the mm -hmm. month of July. It's an excellent result considering the shop mm -hmm. is operated mm -hmm. under COVID-19 restrictions. So yeah. it was, um, I think our team there is uh, mm -hmm. pretty pretty happy with that. And NRM, uh, we have developed a gorse weed management template which will be provided to affected land managers so that they can put that to use. And our team will also provide some advice in that area as well. Um, they're the main highlights. Okay. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Just curiosity, what uh, what paint colour actually was revealed at Signet? You knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> Does Len know? Sorry, Len, do you know? No? Oh, okay. I'll stay in suspense too. Yeah. Stop. That's fine. All right. Thank you for that report. Uh, just a couple of activities under the Mayor's uh, report. Um, so activities uh, were reduced last month due to um, me taking a week's leave. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor Doyle, for becoming acting uh, mayor for that period of time. Um, the STC, as the STCA rep on a regional forum twice a week, um, where uh, I provide information that I received via 
the business enterprise centres, um, and uh, which has got Dufty and also the Southeast Regional Development Association, Andrew Hyatt and Alex Arroyes from Destination Southern Tasmania. I thank them for their tireless work hooking up with me every week to um, brief me about how businesses are actually coping during COVID and, and what uh, government initiatives are working for them and what ones aren't and uh, what opportunities they see um, where government can step in and, and assist or uh, their um, perhaps their associations. Um, met with Minister Shelton as um, one of the mayors in Tassie online, uh, as well as the acting director of policy and sector performance for local government, which is Matthew Healy, um, regarding the proposed review of the councillor code of conduct. And uh, I certainly did get an indication that all councillors, they'll find a way of getting all councillors uh, across Tasmania involved in that process and having a voice. Um, online webinar I attended to relaunch the new chapter of White Ribbon. For those that may be aware, White Ribbon um, stopped abruptly. There's now a new leadership team and, uh, and a new chapter, they call it. And that was relaunched with uh, presenter Rosie Batty, who we all know. Uh, they're the full interview you will find on the White Ribbon website on their YouTube channel. And it was uh, a, a very, very good interview. Uh, annual plan implementation report. Um, I have that listed here. Did you wish to speak to that at all, or just if there's any questions later? I'm happy to take questions, Pete. Okay. Um, do any councillors have any questions they would like to ask the general manager regarding the annual plan implementation report for the fourth quarter? No, Mayor. Okay. All right. I, I just have a I couple. have a couple. Oh, you do? Yes, please. Councillor Gibson. Um... It's in the administration and communications area, maintaining and developing collaborative partnerships with community groups. I noticed that there's a fairly big decline in the number of meetings, no doubt, because of uh, COVID-19. I wondered whether um, attempts have been made to have some of those meetings online using this sort of technology. Oh, which set, so could you, pages? yeah, what page, Councillor Gibson, that we're looking at, please? 117 of 173. Oh, July was 21, October 10, January 9, April 6. Um, Sorry, Mayor, what page was that again, Paul? Uh, 117. Sorry, did you say the maintain and develop collaborative partnerships with community groups, organisations yeah. and agencies? So it's that line there, just wondering yeah. if there's any online digital um, connections that we can make for the rest of the period for COVID. Uh, so this is the end of last year's report um, and because it finished in April, oh, yeah. June, yeah, it probably was when we had that decline. Um, but yes, we, we do have a number of meetings happening online uh, with most community groups. In fact, it's probably um, the majority and, I, you know, I, there are a few start to come back face to face, but still we have to maintain social distancing, of course. But um, I, I can take that on notice as well and just do a little bit more um, investigating. But I dare say um, COVID is probably the thing that's had a major impact. It's not just not being able to meet online. It's, it's during the time where we had to um, make a lot of arrangements from, for people working from home, not just from our end. It would have been the other, um, um, other service providers and other people we're networking with also under the same situation. I did have one other question, which is on page 137. 
which is about um, developing community education programs around encouraging waste minimisation. Um, I know there's a couple of zeros there. I wondered if there was anything in the wind coming coming forward as far as education on waste minimisation. Uh, Mayor, we might have to take that one on notice and just check to see what programs we're running. Uh, but once again, that's during the, uh, the um, COVID-19 uh, situation. Um, there is also, uh, Mayor, you might be aware of transition on the arrangements from the Southern Waste Strategy to a Legat run model. So there is actually a changeover happening in that space at the moment on who will be running with um, uh, these sort of programs. But Thank we'll come back. Yeah. yeah. So take, take time notice. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions just regarding that report. Um, so page 72 of 173, uh, noting one of the measurements for reviewing the caravan park bylaw as not being completed. Um, there was no footnote that I could find against that one to explain and the footnote, footnotes are fantastic, by the way. That's very helpful. Um, but that one is put in ongoing, and I couldn't see an explanation for why it's ongoing and not completed. Or, you know, what the reason was. I'm not sure if our acting director would like to take that or. Sure. Um, yeah, through you, Mayor. Um, so there is actually a footnote um, reference for that particular item on page uh, 75 of 173, um, where it states the annual review completed no further action required at this stage. Um, so there has been a review conducted of the, of the Caravan Park bylaw. Um, there are further amendments, however, um, that we're, we are waiting on, and that's all subject to the Building Act and, and making sure that there's consistent references to that um, and any related Building Act provisions. Um, but it should also be, done, be noted too, so the, the um, <coughs> Caravan Park bylaw, the Caravan bylaw, sorry, um, does get reviewed on an annual basis um, and is due for expiry um, in September 2025. So. Um, it is certainly on the list for, for further review um, and we're, we're waiting on that further advice around the new Building Act and, and any provisions that need to be considered. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, on page 85 of 173, noting customer service charter review and update, has that got a fortnight that I might have missed? I'll, I'll phrase it differently now. Yeah. It's got ongoing. And I couldn't see a footnote for that one. Yep, so I'll answer that one, Mayor. Um, so the chart is ongoing review at the moment following um, Council's first get the initial draft. Mm -hmm. um, and we've since since this agenda was put together with the schedule day and we're workshop on October 13 with the councillors to have a look at the revised draft. Okay. And uh, following which we'll be taking the, the charter through to, to here to council. Beautiful. Thank you very much for that. Um, Page 116 of 173, uh, noting the development of the Reconciliation Action Plan. Um, I couldn't find a footnote on that one, and that's set in the ongoing position as well in the 12-month plan. Do we have a expected time frame? Or? Uh, Mayor, I'll, I'll attempt to answer that Thanks in the back. absence of uh, right. our Director of Community Services. Sorry, 116. Uh, 116, yeah. I just couldn't find a footnote. Um, So uh, there is actually a full plan for that one oh, too. And it just says it, it commenced on February 2020. The project has been placed on hold due to COVID-19 and due to the need to engage with the community. Uh, the working group scheduled to recommence in July 2020. Um, I also have spoken to our director and a draft engagement plan has been developed for discussion. And the next working group meeting is still proposed to um, go ahead as planned um, with a uh, proposed completion date of June 2021. So it, it actually is still ongoing, but it has mm -hmm. had a, um, 
a period where it's been on hold during the COVID uh, pandemic period. Okay. They are. I think I know why. They normally have a number next to them. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Them. Instead of the arrow, yeah. that's why. Yeah. That's so right. that, yeah. that might be why there's been a. We'll clarify that. So that bit of, didn't uh, correlate. Yeah. yeah. There you go. That's the reason why. They had a number there. So I'll just check out. I've got one more on there. It could be the same deal. That is just an arrow with no number for me to refer to. 137 of 173. Uh, this is the last one. Uh, development of HV waste management strategy. So 137. Doesn't look like there's a footnote, but I'll check. So there is no footnote to that one. On that one. But, um, uh, yeah, just perhaps an, an expected time frame um, for that work to be. Uh, yeah, so they did. Sorry, thanks, Mayor. They did commence last quarter. Um, in terms of a timeline for completion, I mean, at the moment it's really just slated for completion during this financial year. Uh, the exact time for completion, it will depend on a range of factors for the, I guess, the area that's, that's working on it. Uh, things like the completion of the climate change strategy. Um, council workshops, community engagement, and other requests and priorities. So, look at this stage, I think tentatively we'd be hoping for a draft strategy around the middle of the, the financial year, um, around January. But yeah, it will, it will depend on those other factors. But that's, that's I guess, tentatively what we're expecting. Okay, all right, thank you for letting us know. That's great. Okay, so now, um, any other questions regarding that particular report? I do silence. So we'll go on to the youth committee notes. Um, I would have normally asked the director. Yep, I can if do it. You'd like to. All right, um, lovely. Thank you, Emilio. So, um, without, sorry, a lot of detail, um, I can um, mention that there are a number of notes here because uh, some of the past meetings there uh, wasn't a full quorum. However, some meetings were still um, undertaken and notes were taken and so we thought it was prudent to actually put the notes to the council meeting with the last lot of minutes as well. Uh, so one of the main topics that the committee did actually discuss at the July meeting was um, plans for Mental Health Week, um, an event um, in October and um, the COVID-19 recovery process. They were the main topics of discussion at the youth committee meeting there. Thank you. Is there any questions regarding um, those notes and minutes. No, thank you very much. Uh, we'll now go to the Arts and Culture Committee minutes of the 28th of July. Uh, would the Chair, Councillor Campbell, like to talk to those? Councillor Campbell, would you like to talk to the Arts and Culture Committee minutes? Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, it was um, a very... Yes, thank you. Can you hear me, Mayor? Yes, we can now. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, you yeah, can. Hello? Oh, thank yes. you. Yeah, good. Um, yes, I just, I'd like to um, say that the, um, the committee uh, really um, is very active. I think they're a great bunch of people who are really involved in the um, community and I think they're all energised. And one thing I'd like to say is that, you know, trying to find a, um, a meeting space is obviously quite difficult and that was discussed. Um, and looking at, you know, how we can possibly promote artists, arts and culture in the, um, in the valley, as I'm sure... Councillor Wilson has, in the pre in previous times, um, been involved in that as well. And it would be good, I think, for um, more community engagement with um, groups like the Arts and Culture um, Group because they do have some very good ideas. They're very active and I would like to see um, that the the people involved to have a little bit more um, autonomy in, you know, what they're trying to achieve. 
Um, I think that for any um, group, it's possible for them to come up with very creative ideas. And I think um, it's a great committee that's there. And yes, I'm very supportive of what they're doing. So thank you for the opportunity of um, giving me a chance to speak about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Is there any questions for Councillor Campbell as the chair of that committee? I, I do have one question. I don't yes. know if it's the Councillor Campbell. I I always thought it was the Arts and Heritage um, Committee, and I somehow that sort of slipped through to being Arts and Culture, and Arts and Culture are the same thing. So I wondered what happened to our, our heritage. Uh, through, through to the yeah. general manager. I, yeah, I can answer that. Um, the name did change when uh, the new uh, strategy and the new committee was put together in around, I think it was late 2017 or early 2018. So there was a, um, a review of the committee. It was called um, Arts and Heritage, um, but with that review and a new um, group coming together, uh, the name Arts and Culture was actually selected. Yes. Okay. All right. I've got a nod there. Was there a change of emphasis? Was there a change of emphasis at the same time, or not really? Um, actually, we may <laughs> throw to our director, but there was a um, change of strategy. In fact, there was a new strategy developed for that committee. Adam, um, so. through you, Mayor, uh, Councillor Gibson, there was a broadening of the um, committee, so it was Arts and Heritage. Um, it's broadened to arts and culture, which also incorporates the heritage aspects of it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. All right. So um, I'll put the motion. Oh, sorry. Do any councillors wish to table uh, or speak to their activities first before we go to move? Uh, yes, Mayor. <clears throat> I'd like to just um, talk about the fact that um, the whole AGMs that we've attended, that I've attended so far, um, I'm, I'm always taken back by the amount of wonderful volunteers we have in the Valley. Um, today was extra special at Dover as the committee that's been there from the start um, all retired their seats and a new committee and a new era was done today so we congratulated them and yeah it, it's it's heartwarming to see the amount of our, as these guys are doing volunteering thank you well well said well said is there any other councillors that would like to table their activities and speak to them tonight no all right we'll move on so I'll put the motion and we'll ask each councillor to state whether they are for or against the motion. In fact, I didn't even do the motion today. Um, is, it, is someone happy to move a motion that the general reports and minutes? Thank you very much. That's Councillor Prince. A seconder, please. Um, that is Councillor Newell. And that is for the minutes for the period of 1 to 31 July 2020 be received and noted. Um, I will put the motion and we'll ask each councillor to state whether they are for or against the motion. We have Deputy Mayor Doyle. For, Mayor. Councillor Newell. For. Councillor Gibson. For. <coughs> councillor Campbell. Councillor Campbell. For, oh, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Prince? For me. Councillor Lovell? For me. Councillor O'May? Sorry, for me. For Thank you. I'm having trouble with the connection. Yes, I thought that was the case. We, we have got you though. And the Mayor is for, that's all councillors present. Sorry, Councillor Wilson, why aren't you on this? For Sorry. Me. I thought I'd re that. Sorry, apologies, Councillor okay. Wilson. Uh, and the Mayor is for, so that's all councillors present and the motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, we now move on to item 11, Council Workshops, uh, the 11th of August, if you'd like to speak to those 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, <coughs> one workshop between the last meeting. Um, the councillors were provided a presentation on the po possible repurposing of the, um, the old visitor centre on 23 Main Street, uh, Hillville. Um, so, and after that um, presentation, we actually did a tour of the council offices. So this uh, 40, 40A and the um, visitor centre building. And um, it has um, been worked up into a report for consideration tonight, Mayor. Yeah, lovely. Very good. Thank you. Uh, we now move on to item 12, councillor questions. There are no questions on notice. No, no. Are there any questions without notice? Yes, thank you, Mayor. I have a couple. Yeah, please. I have one too. All right, lovely. Thank you. Does Sally want to go first or not? You, it's fine, you can go first, That's okay. Councillor Wilson. My question to you, Mayor, is that uh, basically during June and July, I was interviewed by Andy Waterhouse on the UNFM, Rear Code of Conduct and, and Other Matters, by a, a resident who brought these against me. Um, when interviewed about this and other matters, at no time did I state I was representing this council or fellow councillors. My question to you, Mayor, were both the letters of complaint that you made regarding this resident? A resolution of council. Uh, and I, I as a chair, have a right not to respond um, to that question. Yep. And I won't be responding to that question, okay. Councillor Lawson. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Doyle. Uh, yes, Mayor. <clears throat> I have a question. I've had um, had a lot of uh, phone calls um, concerning the. The trees on State Growth Roads. Um, I'm wondering how many times they have been checked since the corridor study of 2012 was done. So my question is, could the um, the GM, the Director of Infrastructure, and the Mayor raise this with State Growth whenever they have their next meeting? Um, for you, um, Councillor Doyle. Yes, we can raise it. Um, I am aware they do have a. Um, some sort of inspection regime and I think it's undertaken by their contractors because I know that there are specific tasks they have to undertake on tree maintenance but I, I, I'm happy to ask the question to find out more specific information regarding it. Yeah, Thank you. I mean, thank you General Manager. We have a Director of uh, Infrastructure, Len, you would like to speak as well? Uh, if I may through you, Mayor. Um, Deputy Mayor Doyle, I just wanted to um, read something uh, from the um, Department of State Growth's website regarding roadside trees and plants. Um, so I will summarise this a little. So managing trees and plants near the road helps us to make sure people have high sight distances, enough space to travel safely. It also helps us manage invasive weeds and the risk of falling trees off branches. We regularly audit roads to identify trees and other vegetation that could be dangerous to road users and check any trees that people have reported to us. Um, so they advertise that on their uh, on their website just for information as well. Uh, thank you, Director. Um, I suppose some of the people that have contacted me are not the people that probably go on and use the internet. We had um, quite a bit of a discussion today down at the Dover um, Oval Committee meeting. So um, I do encourage people to report it and I will if they don't have that case. But I think it's just one of these things that um, uh, if we can stay on top of it, that would be good. Thank you very much. Yes? Uh, Councillor Campbell, do you have a question as well? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, to the general manager, could um, would you tell me about um, the road along Signet Coast Road and oh, Leamington Road into Signet Coast Road? Um, there's a, cons a few um, residents have raised the issue of a lot of um, dead trees along both roads. And when I come past, I actually often look and think they yeah, are possibilities of falling. Is that um, a state growth road? General Manager? Coast Road is it? Uh, Livington is, but Signet Coast Road is, is ours. Uh, through you, Mayor, Councillor Campbell, um, 
Lymington Road is a state road. I'm not sure if you heard the director. And Signet Coast Road is ours, is Hill Valley Council's. Uh, if there are uh, trees of concern on the roadside, I would encourage people to definitely um, contact us or, or, or put in a service request so that we, we actually would go and inspect those trees. Mm -hmm. well, so, so does that mean council again? Yes. Request. Yes. Yeah. yes. Sorry. Yeah. Or, or even members of the public, if they're yeah. concerned. Yeah. yeah. I think. Yep. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Um, Through you, Mayor, uh, Councillor Campbell, um, I note um, your question, and um, yes, I do encourage um, any of the public uh, to go through the service request uh, procedure. We'll act on it promptly. But uh, given that you've mentioned it, um, I'll ask staff to um, to drive that um, that route in the next couple of days. Uh, to do a quick assessment to see if they see any uh, any high risk hazards there. I want to ask a question of another one. So, does that, does that suffice? Councillor Campbell, you are happy Thank with that result? Director. <laughs> Thank you, Elaine. Um, yes, another question from Councillor Wilson. Uh, question to the General Manager. On the 3rd of August, we received an email from Councillor Gibson stating that he had received a quote for over $100,000. For ash fielding around the uh, Franklin Oval. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. My question, gentlemen, is this the practice now that councillors can get quotes for these types of things? I, I find it a little bit strange that we as councillors are starting to get quotes for works which are not allowed. Uh, well, I guess it's not it's not common practice. Um, yeah. Normally, staff would actually source the quotes from yeah. our contractors. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I'm just wondering if you know, nine councillors go out and get quotes on trucks and things like that. So. We'll give it a blow. Thank you. Right. Um, right. Any other? Councillor May, you have a question? Uh, um, yes. Yeah, well, my question, my question or a writer to Councillor Joy was suggestion and uh, also Councillor Campbell's in regards to the dead trees on the side of the road. It's not just the Signet Coast Road. There's the Deep Bay Road that I drove not long ago down there. There's quite a few roads. So I agree with uh, Councillor Doyle that we should have somebody um, having a look at all council roads in regards to these dangerous trees. And um, there's some possibility that, that the dry wood can be given to some of the poorer members of the community or something for firewood or something along those lines but in in a storm uh situation i personally believe there's a lot of trees that um, that need addressing from my observations on council roads thank, thank you councillor may uh director len Bester will respond to you uh, thank you through you uh, thank you councillor may um as you're aware council uh through um i own and are responsible for approximately 708 kilometres of our own roads. Um, we do um, regular inspections of these roads, uh, particularly the unsealed roads. Uh, during those drive-through inspections, um, the staff do try to take note of um, any dangerous obstacles that may fall onto a road. Uh, but in saying that, um, the, this council does not have the resources to stop and run a program of, of looking at every tree on that 708 kilometres of road. Um, so, so I hope that um, gives you a bit of an understanding of the, the task ahead of us, if we were to um, do an assessment on on, on the many trees that, um, that align our roadways in a, in a rural municipal area. Um, that's... Um, that's just the fact of it. Um, I'm happy to for any further discussion on it. Uh, yes. Sorry, Mayor. Sorry. But, um, that said, we do have a program of um, tree maintenance. Uh, we do have people um, who are working on uh, roadside and other trees full time. Uh, they are done on a priority basis. So um, they are looked at, and especially if um, they're reported by members of the public who have concerns with dangerous trees as well. Uh, yes. Uh, Mayor, I, I regularly get um, reports from our arborist, our certified arborist, on on whether a tree should be removed or or, or not um, under his recommendation. 
and I sign off on every tree removal um, going by that um, qualified person's um, recommendations. And quite often it is, whether it's in a, a park that is dangerous, park or reserve, or on a roadside that's been brought to our attention or picked up um, on our upon our own inspections. Uh, the beginning, uh, the summary of uh, those reports also tells me where um, where that um, complaint or where that issue was picked up from, and quite often it is our own staff to pick up those issues. So, so in summary, uh, the best thing we can do as councillors is encourage people to contact council. <laughs> HBC at huonvalley.tas.gov.au email address or by phone and a, a customer office will log that concern. That's correct and we will not hesitate to go and inspect the tree if we have a sure. concern that it's unsafe. All right. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Um, are there any further questions? All right. I, I do have one um, for the general manager. Um, so... At the moment, I'm encountering a lot of conversations around the bushfire season, and which is it's very topical at the moment. And uh, farmers also just in the last, probably the last five days, and it'd be interesting to hear what Councillor May says, um, but with the good rains, there's been a lot of growth and there's a belief that there'll be a lot of continued growth. And then when the dry comes, it'll dry everything off and then it'll be a mass rush to try and get everything cut. Um, so, uh, providing more fuel for, for bushfires and, and concerns for people in the community. Just want to know what preparations we're doing, you know, because of COVID, I know things have slowed down yep. all over the place, and what preparations Council's doing at the moment and, and in partnership with others um, to prepare for the upcoming um, bushfire season. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think um, Hill Valley has been pretty fortunate and we've been heavily targeted um, by the Tasmania Fire Service uh, with the Bushfire Ready Neighbourhood Program. Uh, we've had a lot of sessions in the valley already um, and, and, well, the previous rounds. This has a lot to do with the um, 2019 bushfires, of course. Um, but I, I do know that Pelverada, uh, Nichols Ruby, Left Judbury, Lonavale, Glen Hewen, Lucaston, Crabtree and Mountain River area, uh, Renlar and Southport, they've all been areas that have been um, uh, looked at and targeted by the um, Bushfire Ready Safe Neighbourhood Program. Um, there are three community development officers that are um, covering the entire state for TAS Fire Service and they're running programs um, all over. But, but this time, um, a lot of those programs are outside of the Huon Valley communities because of the previous programs we've run. But Council is going to continue to support uh, Bushfire Ready neighbourhood program um, and with, with the messaging, with a scheduled social media campaign and community education program, including a media campaign as resources are available. Now, we'll continue to um, also provide support through our emergency management committee, which is also scheduled to uh, take place over the coming month to discuss preparedness. Um, we're all, always in contact with TAS Fire Service and we'll pass on any messaging or any feedback that we get about concerns as well. Um, TAS Fire Service also mm -hmm. have their um, um, fuel reduction burns that they program across the state. So we're not sure whether we've got any at the moment, but we'll get information on that um, fairly soon from TAS Fire. So do we, do we get notification from, is it the Emergency Management Committee, those experts in there, or is there another body to bring forward, say, for example, an abatement period because of that situation with seasons changing. I might ask our director to talk about abatement because that's probably a, another program the council will be running. Yeah. Um, but we get information from the TAS fire um, area mm. experts, but also from their community li liaison officers on what programs they're running. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, with regards to our abatement program, I guess in the lead up to the fire season, and yeah, I think what you're, you're getting at is, is that can vary as to the time Ooh, for that. It's right. generally late spring to early summer, but it will depend on the conditions. Yeah. Um, in that lead up, we'll do a whole lot of promotions, a newspaper advert, Facebook media release, our website and so on, um, advising people to, to get prepared for the bushfire season. Um, we send out advice letters to properties that have previously had abatement notices, just as a friendly reminder. Um, and we do the, the free green waste at, at Southbridge in the, in the lead up as well. Uh, um, to help people get cleaned up in, in preparation. 
Um, during the fire season is when we would issue a vapor notices potentially, or sometimes it's just a, a, an advice letter or, or actually doing work to careers if we have to. Um, I think the challenge is with what I, what I think you might be suggesting is that we can't we can only issue an abatement where there's a a, a, a current threat to life or assets on an existing mm. property. Not we can't issue one now saying well, we can see it coming and there yeah. will be in four months. It, yeah. There actually has to be that clear and present threat. Mm. Um, so no, there's no way to issue an abatement notice to someone. Um, just in preempting that they're mm. in the future, mm. but sometimes we will send someone an advice letter where um, perhaps we might go around and see a property and you can see that you know this does look like it's 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 got the potential to dry out in the future and mm. may present a, an abatement and just give people a, some friendly <coughs> advice around that. But yeah, in terms of issuing an actual abatement, there has to actually be that yeah. present threat. Yeah, I was just wondering with the intel that you get from the fire services, etc., about how the soil sort of drying out and everything else. Yeah, that sort of definitely. That all comes into it, the okay. soil dryness, the weather itself, and the, you know, how how dry the vegetation is, is what's taken into account in that issue of abatement. Thank you both for your more responses. And I, I have, uh, not sure what order here, but uh, Deputy Mayor Doyle, you have a question? Um, yeah, that well, the, um, the question that I want to raise is, I suppose, is that during the fires last year, or in 2019, yep, Thanks. yeah, um, we, State Growth made the um, comment about, you know, probably slashing a bit more on the sides of the roads. Um, if anyone takes a ride down um, Esperance Coast Road, and I did make a note of this with um, the director and the general manager on Monday, that Esperance Coast Road, um, has been done the best I've ever seen it and it's back to the fence line and it's done um, around everywhere on poles. It'll be easy to maintain when we come into the fire season. So my question is, um, another thing that could be to go to state growth is that they're cutting of the grass because through the fires, a lot of people were unhappy with um, the cutting that state growth had done on the sides of the road. So maybe that can be another thing that can be addressed with them whenever there's a conversation had. Can we Thank add you. it? That Certainly can. We'll, yeah. we'll add that to the list in the discussion with State Growth. Thank you. Thank, Thank, Thank you, you, General Manager. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Doyle. Um, Councillor O'May, did you have a further question? Uh, yes, Mayor. Um, I'd just like to add to what Councillor Doyle has suggested, but um, uh, a little further more, and that's the importance of when the roadside slatting is done. We will have a, a strong um, growth period coming into spring. We've got to early spring already, and uh, it's... Um, it's just, I know it's difficult for uh, for the uh, works department to get around and slash everywhere at one time, but as soon as the grass and foliage stops growing is when it's really required to be uh, slashed, uh, as soon as it starts to dry off. Um, there's, it's sort of, it's difficult to manage because to slash one place early in the spring and it looks great by the end of spring the growth can be such a significant height that um, that uh, that it's still as dangerous as it was before it was slashed so there's a critical period of time that everything should be slashed as the grass has dried off and stopped growing coming into the fire season which means that everything's got to be done in a very short period of time so what I'd like to suggest is whether we do it through contractors or, or, or how we go about the situation that, um, that the effort is, is more intense at that particular period of time when the grass has finished growing and just starts to dry off going into summer. It's the most critical point is in timing. And the second thing I'd like to add is and I touched on this the other day, is in regards to 
the amount of gorse on the side of the road in some places coming from Bowes Hill into Signet, the gorse is so high and so close to the road, if we get a fire coming in a northerly direction, it will be virtually impossible to be able to travel down the road between Signet and Yuanville. If that course catches on fire and it burns like um, nothing else when it's uh, got wind and flame in it, that you will not be able to travel down that road. So I think it is very much the responsibility of whoever controls that piece of road that they do something about this course. It's, oh, it's thank not you, only Kat. an issue because of the weed, but um, it's a major fire hassle. So uh, we should be really looking into that. Th thank you, Councillor May. I'll just see if uh, Director Len Bester would like to respond before we finish off question session. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, Councillor May, uh, you are quite factual in your statements about um, the time that the grass all grows at the same time around the whole state at the same time it's drying out. Council currently have two full-time uh, mowers, hydro mowers. They're specific pieces of equipment. They're not uh, a tractor with a, uh, with a slasher on the back. They're robotic arms. They can get the reach and go around guideposts, poles and other obstructions. So we have them running full time all year round um, during the busy period that the growth period or drying period that you speak about. We also engage a contractor as well. Contractors are very, very difficult to get that time of year because everybody wants them um, to do their own slashing and do their own roadside. So um, with the two that we have, um, the budget we have and the contractors that we engage during that busiest time. Um, our our hydromiles have already started uh, and worked back from Cockle Creek now. I've just finished on Esperance Coast Road and they'll keep on going. They start to, um, they've been working together um, through this period, but then they'll start to split up to go into the smaller roads. Um, but it, it is uh, very much a challenge um, for the amount of resources and I just, Unless we can resource and have um, have other um, hydromowers ourselves um, for these busy periods, because the season is the same all around the state, and uh, they're very much in demand. So, just summarising um, that up, um, Director, is that if Council made a decision to fund that the additional equipment and additional overall resources then um, more will be able to be achieved than what we are currently able to put us the standard, the service level we're able to provide now, which is what we've budgeted for Thanks. and based on experience. Very good summary. All right, thank you. Yeah, the resources are very hard to get even with contracts at that time of year. Oh, thank you very much. Through, through the mayor to, to the director. Um, is the machinery available for at least or for hire when out there at that time of the year or not? Uh, no, you can't. You can't uh, dry hire this equipment at yep. uh, that time of the year. Um, um, Department of State Growth also have uh, their stored away vehicles. I know stored away uh, purchased an extra couple of um, hydro miles as well in the, in the last two to three years um, just to get through um, the work that they have to do. And Department of State Growth also um, cut a narrower path than what we do. Uh, so they, they do um, a single run through, we do a double run yeah. or, or greater. As um, um, Deputy Mayor Doyle um, alluded to on Esperance Coast Road, we've, we've gone um, back probably about three runs back to the fence. Good. Thanks, Drew. Good. Beautiful. Thank you very much. So that completes question time. Thank you very much uh, for the general manager and the directors that responded to those questions. Uh, we now move on to item 13, which is notices of motion. Councillor Gibson is um, putting up a notice of motion um, this evening, uh, therefore he'll be moving it. And uh, if we can ask you to read out that notice of motion, please, Councillor Gibson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the general manager will make available to councillors with as much notice as possible an itemised list of reports on forward works and projects. The list will be updated weekly in line with executive leadership team meetings, will include all items in
in progress for which councillors have responsibility, excluding operational matters which are the responsibility of the general manager. C, include the name and type of item and report and the oh, the, the type of item the, the report addresses. D, indicate to which director or councillor should ask questions and make suggestions. E, include an est estimated date, if possible, for when the item will be brought to council meeting. And F, be listed in order of likely date for council consideration from soonest to latest. And is there someone to second that motion, please? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. I'll second that motion. Okay, it's now up for um, discussion. Councillor Gibson, would you like to make some opening remarks, please? Thank you, Mayor. Look, this is a really simple motion, um, but I think it'll really help councillors do our job, which is to inform, inform ourselves and consult with community on issues. Um, under the Local Government Act, councillors must monitor policies, services, facilities and asset, assets, as well as facilitating communication between council and community on such issues. The aim of the list is to involve councillors early in the decision making process so that uh, we can fulfil these responsibilities. This meeting is um, a good example with 14 reports arriving on councillors desk last Friday with three working days to um, perform this role. Uh, um, the list will provide councillors time to inform themselves by asking questions, consulting broadly with the community. It's going to give the opportunity to think and explore and research options for projects and programs and services. Um, yeah, I think having a clear view of what's coming up makes it possible for councillors to properly fulfil their responsibility. Um, what else was I going to say? Involving councillors early in the process, I think also may well reduce the likelihood of wasted staff time, having to redo work. Um, so the list helps councillors engage with council work and should result in better decision making process as a whole. I know the general manager encourages a process that avoids surprises and I appreciate his help with the wording of the motion. Uh, thank you, Councillor Gibson. Uh, so uh, I'll now ask each councillor to make a comment and or ask a question. Just remember you can only make one comment. Um, Right, so we move to Councillor Campbell, first of all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, I uh, would like to say that for me, um, you know, it was it, we do get a large volume of reading material and I think it's really important for councillors to have the time to do justice to it. Um, the staff, you know, do present um, comprehensive reports, but it's very difficult when we're not um, privy to a lot of the information that comes. And I just like to say that for me, it's really important to have the time to read it and to understand it and be informed. So. Yes, that's. Um, I would like to see um, us as councillors work together on a lot of these um, matters that come before us and take on that responsibility. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Campbell. Uh, Councillor Wilson. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, to me, I'd like to speak against the motion because I believe that it comes at an increased cost uh, to this council in these very difficult times we're in at the moment, not only in the dollar terms, but also in staffing times. I think the policy that we have in place at the moment serves this council well, extremely well. Um, you know, we have six very professional directors that give us some very good advice and recommendations, and we can always go and talk to them at any time about these issues. It concerns me, I, to the best of my knowledge, there's no other council in Tasmania that's uh, uh, getting this sort of information. I think we're better to stick with what we've got because there will be a cost to this council, which we certainly can ill afford uh, in this period. 
Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Councillor Fritz. Um, yeah, look, it's an interesting concept, um, and I certainly agree that the the five or so days we get, um, five six days that we get, sort of to read through everything, can be challenging, um, especially given personal circumstances can vary and often, you know, you may not have the, the time required to get through the reading without a lot of late nights, early mornings, that kind of thing. Um, but I'm not wholly convinced that this will do anything other than delay and increase the time requirements for the paperwork. I suspect it would just be like holding everything off for a couple of weeks. I don't know if that's more efficient or not. Um, I'm open to be convinced for or against at this stage though. Thank you, Councillor Prince. Councillor Lovell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I feel personally that it's it's getting it's blurring the lines and getting a bit too close to operations for me. That's my comment on that one. Thank you, Councillor Lovell. Councillor May. Uh, uh, thank you, Mayor. I, uh, I question whether this is potentially going to save time. I uh, agree with Councillor Lovell. I believe uh, that it potentially will be meddling in uh, the directors and our general manager's role uh, and to a point where it might frustrate them. Uh, I think we have quite proficient professional staff doing a very good job and um, I believe that they uh, they enlighten us quite well on uh, issues that we should be involved in. Uh, I see some merit in what Councillor Gibson's saying, but I, I really don't believe that um, it outweighs the uh, good intent shown by our staff and manager, and um, I, I, I really don't feel that we're going to achieve anything by uh, touching on this direction uh, from okay. my point of view. Mayor, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor May. Uh, Deputy Mayor Doyle. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, look, I can, I can see um, some of Paul's points um, are good because we'd all like to know things probably before they hit the media or before whatever happens. But I'm sure that's not done for any reason other than when it's been received. Um, so I find it hard to um, go with the motion tonight, Paul, because, but I'm open for discussion upon this maybe um, next time we're all together. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Doyle. Um, Councillor Newell? Uh, yeah, look, I'd just like to speak against the motion. I think we have a fantastic team of uh, vastly qualified experts uh, in our directors and our general manager. I think we need to respect their, um, their experience in their fields and uh, I'm very happy with the information received and the decisions that we end up making with the... Um, with the information we receive. I think the last thing any business needs, whether it be uh, in government level or commercial level, is too many chiefs spoil the camp. Um, meddling in policy, uh, meddling in day-to-day -day running, I just think it would be, uh, with all due respect, I just think it would, would be unworkable. Thank you, Councillor Neil. Um, I have a question for Councillor Gibson before I um, make a, uh, a statement. So, Councillor Gibson, um, the main what has been the main trigger of this particular notice of motion? H has it has it been, as in the example you've given about one of the reports tonight, where there's ten policies listed, and you need to make yeah, a decision it's, on that? It's about, I mean, there's a lot that. Uh, council does. It's a lot of work and I totally agree that um, we have highly qualified staff who are going to do the work. Our, our role is to um, be, a, you know, be informed about 
what the policies are. And I think as the as policies come up, it's a huge task to to actually get it, get it in your head as to you know what we're actually how we might adjust policies into the future to to steer council and um, which is our role. So yeah, it's about it's about having time um, to see seeing a horizon of of policies and reports coming up and having time to be informed. As simple as that, just to be able to inform yourself. Before making a decision. Yeah. No, before the report comes up. So yeah. if, if say there's a report, you know there's a report coming up about uh, climate change, well, for example, you, you might um, do some research, you might talk to community members about it, and so that, you know, w when the, a policy is formulated, you're, you're not having to sort of get up to speed in the last three days, you're, um, you're uh, better informed. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for answering that question. Um, and I, I'm just, uh, I suppose my my position on the notice of motion, I, I appreciate your trigger, the trigger of, of what's brought this about, um, because I know we we're in the same situation last year with renewing of um, contracts, like for, um, I think they were for agreements for prop our properties. And there were a few in one hit, in one report, like in one uh, meeting. And I appreciate also what um, other councillors have said as well about balancing that good advice. I understand also about our role as councillors and that we also have a responsibility uh, when over policies that are um, and, and what direction is set in council and policies often are about setting a direction Sorry, <laughs> about setting a direction Don't jump me <laughs> I was using, I was using <laughs> someone else's time <laughs> I didn't stop it so $50 fine <laughs> <laughs> um, So and, yeah, and I appreciate what you're talking about as well, about what our legislative responsibility is. And also that just as much as council staff are responsible for continuous improvement, so are councillors. Yeah. And so if we aren't having enough time to look at the documents that we are responsible for endorsing, then we perhaps aren't applying all those responsibilities that our role actually requires us to. So I appreciate that. I'm just wondering whether this might have been able to be done once again in a more simplified um, manner, manner um, than the quantity of details that is being required on the motion. So, um, yeah, I, that's really just a summary from me. Um, okay, uh, we have a question from Councillor Lovell, I can see. A question. Thank you, Mayor. Um, through you to the General Manager, um, are, we, um, are we as councillors allowed to ask for policies to be brought up for, um, to be looked at, to be reviewed at any time? Yes. Through you, Mayor, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we do have a review period on the on each policy, and they do vary from um, subject and department. But um, that's the maximum period. There's nothing um, stopping a councillor or even uh, member of staff who might find something to suggest that we should do a review at any time. So, yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, it looks like there are no further questions. Oh, yes, there is. Councillor Gibson, do you have a question? A question? Uh, sorry, I can't sorry, hear sorry. you. I forgot to you, will, you, will, yeah. you will have an opportunity to summarise. You will have an opportunity to summarise. I, yes? I just had a question for the general manager, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. um, yes. General Manager, uh, is it is it 
also the case that the executive leadership team have this uh, information pretty much to hand and are working on on a similar sort of list. So it's pretty much the case that you just need to compile what's already there into one place. Uh, Mayor, we, we do have an internal list that we use, uh, probably not quite as detailed as, as what you're asking for, uh, but that we use just as a reference of, you know, of what's coming up on a quarterly basis, monthly basis, mm. you know, half yearly, so just as a prompt for ourselves. Um, but I guess the thing is with our list is that things do change and items can be put on that list, you know, within within a week of a council meeting, you know, depending on what we're working on, what subject might come up, what the state government might, um, might do. And um, yeah, so they're, they're, it's it's quite fluid. Yeah. Thank, thank you for answering. Councillor Omar, you have a question, not a statement, a question? Uh, the question is uh, to you and the general manager, uh, Mayor, is um, do you think that the process that we're already currently using is um, is uh, quite um, appropriate? And I, I use the the um, the example of how we've postponed the Franklin Foreshore plan and then revisited it and go back to it again. Is isn't that the same process that Councillor Gibson has actually? Um, suggesting that we use here? I, I just see it's a duplication of, of really the process that we're already using. Mm, um, probably, I mean, Councillor Gibson might like to answer that himself because it's his notice of motion. Um, but the way I see his notice of motion is actually forewarning councillors of what uh, reports will be coming to council so that instead of getting three working days notice of the uh, revision of 10, we'll just use this as an example, um, because it is a good example, of 10 policies that if we knew that those policies and had access to those policies perhaps three months prior to it actually being tabled at council, then councillors would have had the opportunity to um, to look in detail and had the opportunity to ask questions as well. Um, and, uh, and I think uh, Councillor Gibson has explained a bit about what process he might do if that was the situation. So I think it's uh, it's just been a, a good example of when, if you had one or two, it is like a normal report. You have the time to be able to read it, research it, um, ask questions, but when you get a body of 10 policies in one hit, it is extremely difficult. I mean, if I questioned each of the councillors um, today about how well you felt acquainted to each of those policies, um, then then you, you would need to, I believe, answer to yourself that I know them quite well because I've read them all and I understand them. And um, because that's part of our legislative requirements and our roles and responsibility. But uh, oh, you asked the general manager as well in that question. Sorry, what was Do you want the question? question? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. In, in, could, if I could just say, in the example of um, the policies, that could be a, a simple conversation. Provide like that feedback. I certainly would take it on board that there's a lot in one in one hit, and we'll um, certainly make. Um, make it our business to stagger them into the future. The reason we've got so many is they're all coming up for review um, because of the 2016, uh, from the Board of Inquiry's recommendation to review all the policies. They all came up at once and now they're all up for review at once. But we're certainly happy to stagger those out just as, you know, by simply requesting that sort of um, process. So no, no problem with doing that. Uh, yep. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Councillor May. Um, Councillor Campbell, a question? Councillor Campbell, we can't hear you. Uh, 
All right. Might might have to leave it. I think um, Councillor Campbell has some technical issues at home at the moment. So, um, Councillor Gibson, uh, would you like to um, sum up uh, your notice of motion, please? Yes, thank you very much, Mayor. Look, um, I think this having a having a list of upcoming works is actually common practice in a number of councils, from what I understand. Um, as the general manager said, you know, the, there is a list. Whether the, the, the detail is onerous with regard to um, the actual motion, I'm happy to remove whatever bits of information are, are difficult, but, and I'd like to know what, what they might be, if that's the case, to amend it. Um, it's, it's not about reading, having more time to read. It's about knowing that there's going to be a discussion in, in a couple of months about, I don't know, asset management. So we're not all experts in asset management. We can't, we can't be expected to be, but if you know that asset management is something that's going to come up, then you can talk about it to other people. You can um, do some, some uh, research and, um, you know, ask questions of the, of the um, team leader um, and, yeah, be abreast of the subject. So it really is only a list. It's not expecting, it's, it's not expecting um, the staff to be providing reports earlier or in any way or necessarily, as the general manager says, it's a very fluid thing, you know, and that's why we, we amended the, the um, motion to say with as much notice as possible. So you may ha have some things on the list with two days of notice, and that's totally fine. But, um, but there's lots of other things that are coming up over a longer period. Um, there's certainly no question of the quality of the work of the staff. That, that's not an issue. It's, it's just um, about giving us as councillors time to do our job properly and uh, you know, have this horizon of the, the upcoming work that we've got to do. Okay, thank, thank you for that summary. Do we have Councillor Campbell back with us? Oh, okay. A question from Councillor Campbell, who must be able to hear us, but we can't hear her. Can you, sorry, I can't read that question. Apologies. The question says to the general manager, is there any reason uh, that... Oh, thank you, Councillor Campbell. Your question? Uh, my network's quite bad, Mayor. Uh, yes, to the general manager, um, through you, Mayor, is there any reason that this list be simplified to something suitable for councillors to allow them to have more time to understand what is required under the legislation as a board of directors? Sorry, un under legislation? Yeah, sorry that. Yeah. I mean, the list is not required under legislation, no. if that's the question. Did you hear the response, Councillor Campbell? Uh, uh, sorry, I meant the motion, Mayor, that the oh, motion be simplified. Be simplified. Can the motion be simplified? Is that what, sorry, are you asking whether the motion can be simplified? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I think you'll have to be a bit, bit more in guidance than, than simplified, I'm afraid, Councillor Campbell. If it makes things okay, easier... Okay, it's... Sorry, if it makes things easier, we could try and pr provide that list that we do, but to mandate it as a... Um, as a motion, it does actually want us in to um, make sure that we uh, provide this level of detail. And like I said, with a discussion, I can provide some info um, without actually having it mandated. Okay. All right. That's the. So, did you did you understand that, Councillor Campbell? And I think the other councillors heard that the general manager. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, General Manager, but you are happy to provide something in a form of a list. 
we can provide the list. Yes. But as long as there's acceptance that it will change, change. Um, there, yes. could, there could be a report saying that it's coming to this meeting, but then it will go no. next. It'll actually be removed and go to the next meeting. It, there's, it's, it's just not um, something that we can guarantee that will be accurate. That's, that's the issue. I think all we can do is vote on the motion. Really. Yes, we are. We're going to vote yeah. on the motion. Without making any guarantees. We'll, we'll vote on the motion. So, uh, and I did allow Councillor Campbell's question because we did lose contact with her when she was trying to ask a question. So, so I'll put the motion and we'll ask each councillor to state whether they are for or against the motion. Uh, Deputy Mayor Doyle? Against at this time. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Councillor Newell? Uh, against. Thank you. Councillor Gibson? For. Councillor Campbell? Oh, Mayor. Councillor Wilson? Against. Uh, Councillor Prince? Against, Mayor. Councillor Lovell? Against, Mayor. Councillor O'May? Against, Mayor. Thank you. And the Mayor is against. Uh, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven against and two, four. And that means the uh, motion has been lost. Um, Thank you. Thank you for putting the notice of motion forward, though, and uh, have the discussion. Um, so we now move to the first report of the evening, the Huon Valley Workforce Planning Study. And do we have a councillor to move a motion, please? Yes. Thank you, Councillor Newell. Second the motion, Mayor. Okay, I, I think um, Councillor Gibson just seconded, so... Yeah, pick them out. That one. Thank you. Um, so, Councillor Newell, opening comments, please. Uh, I think it's a good uh, study, and I think we should uh, think, uh, uh, back it. Back it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right, lovely. All right. I'll now ask each councillor to make a comment and/or ask a question. Thanks, um, Councillor Campbell. Can I just say in the silence? Sorry, I, don't know I just missed that, else... Mayor. I'm just trying to All keep right. up with the Wi Fi here. Okay, um, certainly. So okay. We're looking at. So, Councillor Campbell, well, I'm asking whether you would like to make a comment or ask a question regarding the Huon Valley Workforce Planning Study. Yeah, I think so. All right, look. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to make a comment. Um, I'd just like to say that... Can she type her questions, Mayor? Yes, she was able. Uh, Councillor Campbell was able to type the last one. Excuse me, just We're just going to see whether there might be another way we can communicate with Councillor Campbell this evening. I don't know if anybody else is having trouble, but the sound is also coming in and out. So it's, I don't know whether it's oh, okay. something at your end. Um, I'm just not going too bad. To... Not obviously not as bad for me as it is for yes. Councillor Campbell. Okay. All right. Pretty cool. Just... Pretty good down here in Jeeston, Paul. That's where you should be. <laughs> There's a number on the screen there. If we could ask her to dial into that. Oh, I can't read it. Oh, I guess. Yep. You texted her. Thank you. All right. Lovely. So All right. Can Councillor Campbell, we will come back to you. Um, we're going to dial you in by phone. So. Um, I'll move on to the next person. Councillor Wilson, would you like to make some uh, a comment or ask questions? No, thank you, Mayor. I'm quite happy with uh, with the recommendation. Thank you. Um, Councillor Prince. Uh, yeah, no. just... Um... Councillor Prince. Yeah, um, yeah, and sort of alludes to the question we got earlier from, I think it was Geoffrey. Yes. I'm a fairly gut approach sort of feelings person. 
um, which is you know, the way I've always been, but it is actually good to have data to look at, especially when you're approaching a subject or something like that. So I really appreciate the report. Um, yeah, good effort, really. I, I can see the value in it. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lovell. Um, I just had a question, if I could. Yes. Um, where where does it look like? What will be the first thing that this is used for? Or like, is there something in the pipeline, or is it just sitting there waiting to be used, or is there something ready for it to be put forward to? So within the report, I'll just get to the pages for you. Uh, if you go to the actual, uh, sorry, the attachment, the actual regional workforce planning, um, you'll be able to see that there is work for us to be done, us yes. with our partners. Um, page 23, page 24 and 25 of the report, um, they are all um, directions and recommendations that uh, KPMG have said that we should be working with our partners to achieve. So yep. that is the next body of work to be done. So, so I'm sort of asking, has council got something, you know, they've been waiting for this to be finished and is there something oh. that they've got sitting there waiting, sure. you know what I mean? Yeah, look, one of, one of the sides actually getting this particular data um, so that we actually can have meaningful conversations with different levels of government and partners um, and partners being also industry is um, that... We were, as you will be aware, we were wanting to uh, recruit a workforce coordinator. Yep. And that workforce coordinator um, was going to be a position which was, a, a, I suppose, a same sort of position that has been very successful up in Sorrell with the um, four councils up there, um, whereby they that position has been matching employers, so building um, very effective relationships with the industry and, and small businesses, medium businesses and large businesses to identify what their needs are, what the skill level are that they are recruiting for and also then working for the job active agencies uh, with them, sorry, as well, to um, find suitable um, um, candidates for those jobs. Yeah. And where there is a short fill, uh, shortfall with those particular candidates in their skill level, um, or perhaps it might be that they don't have certain certificates that will be required for the work, then um, the workforce coordinator has been able to ensure through the education streams that those um, programs are being delivered in a timely fashion and what they've been able to achieve for the first time uh, in the eyes of the employers as well, is actually handing over true job-ready employees. So one of the, um, the, one of the, I suppose, the trigger for that particular um, model over in the southeast regional area was that they had one of these reports, um, Councillor Lovell. They had to have the evidence base to be able to attract the funding in the first place. Yeah, and cool. so this was this was the catalyst, and the same has been done in the um, South Central service uh, South Central region with the other four councils, and they now have a workforce or they're recruiting a workforce coordinator. Bell Bay is doing the same thing, but that's more of an industry and council model. So we now have this to then um, be able to go to the state government. Um, which there is a meeting already set up for next week with um, uh, higher level officers within TAFE and uh, Department of Education and Skills Tasmania to try and progress yeah, that, that same initiative. That's mm -hmm. great. So it's straight straight into action, really. Yes. Yeah. General Manager. Acting Director, ah. uh, who's had a lot of involvement. Certainly. Yeah, that's all right. Um, yes. Um, Michelle, Michelle Gledhill. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, General Manager. Um, just to, to add to that as well, um, Councillor Lovell, um, if you refer to paragraph um, point 26 in the report, um, it does state a number of initiatives that are already in progress. I guess some key ones um, that we are already um, adopting. So 
obviously with the Hill and Valley brand and the pillars that we have um, set out within that body of work, um, particularly around investment and product. Um, so this this report, um, some of the, as the information has come to hand, has helped to inform some of those strategies, and will continue to do so as that um, strategy continues to progress. Um, particularly around promoting the valley for, as open for business and encouraging um, business growth and investment into the valley and supporting our, our industries. Um, we've also been working through the Community Services Department um, on the UTAS Pathways Partnership um, and undertaking a review of our service providers network as well. And we're already um, participating um, actively within the Beacon Foundation Work Readiness Program. Um, so there's a number of initiatives that are already well underway. Um, we're also looking forward to using this body of work um, to progress conversations with the TCCI, so the Tasmanian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, around what sort of workshops and um, business networking events and so forth that we can also hold. Um, and obviously uh, working quite collaboratively with our relevant stakeholders, um, training providers and intermediaries as well. Thank you, Michelle. That's an Thanks, excellent Michelle. summary. Excellent summary. Thank you for your question, Councillor Lovell. Uh, do you wish to make a statement? Councillor No, thank you. No, thank okay. you. All right, lovely. Councillor May. I'd like to congratulate Michelle and all involved in this report. I think it's a great report and uh, should be received and noted. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Doyle. Yeah, I mean, if, when you have a read through this, um, Mayor, it's the conclusions in this are really, really interesting, um, where our workforce is going to be required in the time to come. Um, and I know that Dover has um, an aquaculture part in their school down there. So I think this, yeah, it's a really good report that's handy for everybody. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Gibson. Councillor Gibson. I was wondering if we could amend the recommendation to include community engagement at the con consult level. And um, part of the reason for that is that, um, well, the community is a key stakeholder for local employment and COVID got in the way way of the workshops so there was a lack of engagement there um the recommendations on page eight to ten aren't don't have specific actions against them and community community engagement may well identify some specific obstacles to training and employment um if you if you formulated a question around specific goals uh you might get some from initiatives from the community. Um, yeah, yeah. I, can I can I just go to um, the acting director just to find out about how the community are going to be, other than I suppose a a, a media release that could go out to let them know. Um, so I suppose you've got the employer side, haven't you? And then you've got the employee side of the whole equation. And um, maybe that's where Councillor Gibson is coming from, um, is about the employee side. Um, what, what, uh, what, what, I suppose, is there anything planned in future, um, Michelle, in that regard? Or has any other, the other groups done anything similar? Uh, look, nothing, nothing necessarily planned. I mean, uh, within each of those different recommendations in the report, um, so obviously under the educators and trainers area, um, and also within the job facilitators and industry area, there are um, specific actions that may involve that community engagement. Um, you know, such things as taste career days and, and things like that, where there's obviously going to be that broader engagement with, with potential employees. Um, our employment um, intermediaries and those sorts of um, businesses are, are, you know, they already do a lot of that community engagement. So in terms of our involvement with this report, it hasn't been identified for us to do any, any further extended consultation. Um, plus in terms of the scope of the project brief uh, with KPMG, this, this is it um, in terms of that body of work. 
Um, but it is, you know, in terms of that implementation, that's where that engagement will come in. Um, and it will be through those different um, collaborations with the with each of the different stakeholders. Okay, thank, thank you for responding. Um, so just, yes, just back to Councillor Gibson. Um, you you asked whether you, you, you asked the mover, I gather, of the motion, which is Councillor Newell, whether you would be able to make an addition, an amendment to that motion? To include community engagement, yeah. Right, okay. And I will just refer to um, Councillor Newell. Uh, yeah, no, I would not. I think there's enough community engagement as it is, thanks. I'm happy with the report as it is. Okay, all right. So that, that is the response. Um, the, uh, the, that won't be considered as part of the recommendation that's in front of us. Um, but thank you for your, for your comments. Um, and uh, for me, um, I'm very, very happy with the report. It gives me something now that I can go to meetings with and actually be able to talk from a very factual base. So it's wonderful. Thank you. And thank you very much, Michelle and the team. And I know it's a big team because uh, I know Beck was involved as Great well work. and a project officer and others. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Councillor Campbell. Are you there? Councillor Campbell. All right, looks like we're still having technical difficulties, so we will have to move on. Um, and uh, if I could just go back to Council on this. I have a question there. Um, oh, yes, certainly. Just asking... Um, Very poor connection, Councillor Campbell. Question, when, when will we be able to get back to everyone being at meetings again? Because it really slows it up, doesn't it? But well, I, particularly tonight, we actually haven't had this sort of problem, to be honest, before. We haven't had this sort of problem before. But, I mean, do you see shortly we will? Like, Parliament's back now. Yeah, different discussion. Okay. Yes, okay. yeah, yeah. That's not on topic. Yep. <laughs> so, um, all right. Look, I'm sorry, Councillor Campbell. Um, we won't be able to answer your question because we are unable to hear you and we will have to move forward um, with this report tonight. So, Councillor Newell, um, do you have any closing remarks? Uh, no, only that it's a, a great report, uh, plenty of information for us all and uh, I'll back it 100%. Well done. Thank you. So, I'll put the motion. I'll ask each councillor to state whether they are for or against the motion. Deputy Mayor Doyle? Uh, for, Mayor. Councillor Newell? For. Councillor Gibson? For. Councillor Campbell, are you there? No, she's been disconnected. She's definitely been disconnected. Okay, thank you. Councillor Wilson? For, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Briggs? For. Cou uh, Councillor Lovell? For, Mayor. Councillor O'May? For. Thank you. The Mayor is for. That's all councillors present and the motion is carried. Thank you. We now move on to the next report, which is the proposal to formalise road names. Agenda number 16.011 forward slash 20. Do we have a councillor to move the motion? I'll move it, please. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Seconded by Councillor Prince. Councillor Wilson, do you have any opening comments? Uh, no, thank you, Mayor. I think it's pretty straightforward. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll now ask each councillor to make a comment and or ask a question. Councillor Prince. Uh, Bull Oak Way is a very clever name, that's what I say. <laughs> okay. Councillor Lovell. No comment, Mayor. Councillor O'May. No comment, Mayor. Uh, Deputy Mayor Doyle. No comment, Mayor. Councillor Newell. No comment, Mayor. Councillor Gibson. Councillor 
Gibson. Sorry, that was the sound cutting in and out there too. Um, all right, no, I think it's fine. My only comment was on the the list of where the names come from. Could it be be amended to include Aboriginal place names? Is that a uh, policy? Uh, through you, Mayor. The, the names are actually put forward by the developer. Yeah. Mm. And then they. No, no, no we, not for these names. The list of where names um, uh, there's an, in the. I can't. I don't remember the page. But there's a list of where appropriate names come from, and it doesn't include that. Oh, there was a link, was there? Point four in the report. Point four, I think. Oh, local history, early explorers, pioneer settlers. Well, oh, okay. Yes, it does, does it? No, it doesn't. We can check that. Yes. Any other ones that come up? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good pick up. Yeah. Okay, uh, so that's Councillor Gibson. Councillor Campbell is now disconnected, is that correct? We're trying to get her Right, thank you. I'll, I'll wait for you to tell me when she's back. Yeah, that might be easier. Um, and I, my question was more a curious one, General Manager, and that is, are those names historical in nature? Do you know? Uh, I don't know, but I believe that the names are being picked by the developer to represent Grove, as in Grosvenor, and Bull Oak, which is similar to Bullock, but apparently there's Bull Oak trees on yeah. the hill. Ah. So that's, there is, yep. yeah, that's the origin of the names. Thank you very much. I now am enlightened. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I'll just ask whether Councillor Wilson wants to summarise at all. No, thank you, Mayor. Okay. So now voting. Uh, Deputy Mayor Doyle, for or against? For, Mayor. Councillor Newell? For. Councillor Gibson? For. Councillor Wilson? For. Councillor Prince? For, Mayor. Councillor Lovell? For, Mayor. Councillor Romain? For. Yeah, and the Mayor is for, that's all councillors present and the motion is carried. Thank you. Right, um, the next report is the Policy Reviews, Environment and Development Services, Agenda Number 17.015 forward slash 20. Um, you will have in front of you some new documentation. Um, I hope everybody's got that which is the um, 10 policies now divided into separate um, motions. Yes, that's correct. Separate Thanks. motions. Um, so we can discuss each one individually. Um, so if we... Has everybody got that document in front of them? Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. Excuse me, ma'am. Was Councillor Campbell back online? Oh, lovely. Welcome back, Councillor Campbell. Yes, thank you. Okay, we're doing the report we're up to is the Policy Reviews, Environment and Development Services, Agenda Number 17.015 forward slash 20. Um, we are looking at the documentation in front of us that was presented to us, I think, earlier on today. Uh, yesterday? Yes, yesterday? Yes, yesterday. Yes. Yesterday, which separates all of the policies out so we can vote individually on each one and discuss each one. Yes. Um, individually. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. So uh, we have in front of us the, I'll, I'll read out the amended recommendation that the bonding subdivision and development works policy gov-dev 003 having been reviewed be amended in accordance with the policy included as attachment A to this report for implementation. Uh, do we have a councillor to move a motion? Thank you, Councillor Prince. A seconder, please. I'll second that, ma'am. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Councillor Prince, do you have any opening remarks? I do not. Thank you. Um, I'll now go to each uh, councillor to ask them whether they have a want to make a statement or ask a question. Uh, we have Deputy Mayor Doyle. No comment, thanks. I'm fine. Uh, Thank you. Councillor Gibson? 
I only have a question of the uh, relevant um, person. How often is it that uh, a bond is provided for, for ongoing work? Uh, yeah, reasonably. <laughs> um, particularly for subdivisions and strata developments at the most common times. Th thanks, Director. Uh, thank you, Councillor Gibson. Councillor Wilson? Oh, thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Councillor Lovell? No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Newell? No, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Campbell? No comment, thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Omay? No comment, Mayor, thanks. Thank you. Um, and I don't have any comment because I know that if I want to ask to bring this back to a council at a later date, we can do that. We can. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Makes things easier. All right. So, Councillor Prince, do you have any closing uh, comments at all? Uh, no, it's so straightforward. I don't even have a closing comment. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so we, I'll now put the motion and ask everybody uh, one by one whether they would like to vote in for or against the motion. Uh, so we have um, Deputy Mayor Doyle. For, thanks, Mayor. Councillor Gibson. For, thanks, Mayor. Councillor Wilson. For. Councillor Lovell. For, Mayor. Councillor Newell. For. Thank you. Councillor Campbell. For me. Thank you. Councillor Prince. Uh, for. Councillor Home May. For. for. And uh, thank you. And the Mayor is for, so that's all councillors present, and the motion is carried for 17.0154 forward slash 28. Lovely. All right, so we get into the next policy, um, which is 17.0154 forward slash 20B. Amended uh, recommendation reads that the development fee waiver reduction or refund policy GOV DEV 002 having been reviewed be amended in accordance with the policy included as attachment B to this report for implementation. Do we have a council to move the motion? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Doyle. And, uh, and a seconder? Yes. Councillor Prince? Could I just make a quick mention? Yes. Uh, the changes that have been made to the policies, so this is a policy review, so they're not new policies, they're all policies mm -hmm. already in place, and the changes are actually listed in the summary table so that you can see uh, the changes being made to each policy, just for reference. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, do you have any opening comments, um, Deputy Mayor Doyle? No, Mayor. All right, lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, I will now go to each councillor to ask them if they have a comment or would like to ask any questions. Um, we have uh, Councillor Gibson. For? Oh, I'm, not, I'm not asking for a vote. Uh, would you like to make a comment oh, or ask a question? No, I have this... no comment on this one. Thank you, Mayor. Sorry. Thank... That's okay. That's fine. Uh, Councillor Wilson? No comment. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lovell? No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Neil. No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Campbell? No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Prince? No, thank you. Thank you. Councillor O'May? No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, and I don't have any comment on that one either. So, uh, Deputy Mayor Doyle, would you like to have a closing statement at all? No, thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you. All right, so I'll put the motion and I'll ask each councillor, as I read their names out, to um, advise whether they are for or against the motion. Uh, Deputy Mayor Doyle. For, Mayor. Councillor Gibson. For. Councillor Wilson. For. Councillor Lovell. For, Mayor. Councillor Newell. For. Thank you. Councillor Campbell. For me. Councillor Prince. For. Councillor O'May. For. And the Mayor is for that. Uh, and so there's all councillors present and the motion is carried. 
Okay, so we now move on to the next one, which is 17.015 forward slash 20C amended recommendation reads that the enforcement policy GOV ENF 001 having been reviewed be amended in the accordance with the policy included as attachment C to this report for implementation. Um, do we have a councillor to move a motion? Yeah. Councillor Lovell. <laughs> uh, councillor Neil just got in a slight bit beforehand, sorry. Um, and a seconder, Councillor Lovell? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Neil, do you have any opening remarks? No remarks, no comments. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll now call out uh, councillors' names one by one, ask them if they would like to make a comment or and ask a question. Uh, Councillor Doyle? Uh, none at this time, thanks, ma'am. Thank you. Councillor Gibson? No comment, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Councillor Wilson? No comment, thanks, ma'am. Thank you. Councillor Lovell? No comment, thanks, Mayor. Uh, Councillor Campbell. No, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Prince. No, thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Councillor O'May. No comment, thank you, Mayor. Okay. Uh, the only comment I have is that in the limited research that I was able to do before um, this meeting tonight, I visited probably about 10 councils, which is very limited when there's 500 and something councils in, 532 or something councils in Australia. Um, but they only had one enforcement policy and, um, and there was, I suppose this is, there's three policies here on enforcement um, and they were more consolidated um, having one policy. Also, most of them dealt with a, um, oh God, I wish I wrote down the exact words now. Um, it, was, it was on the lines of, I suppose, not code of conduct, but it was on the lines of, um, it, did in, it did state about councillors and staff in those enforcement policies. And whether it was a, I don't think it was a declaration of interest. I'm sorry I'm a bit sketchy on it because I didn't write it down on my notes. Um, I suppose what I'm saying is that I think there could be quite a lot of work that could be done on these three policies, this policy and the next two. Um, at least a really good discussion. And, um, and it, it may well be then that if it gets put through tonight, that this is one that we do ask to come back um, because um, of the opportunity to perhaps improve um, these, this particular um, three that I'm, even though I'm just focused on one at the moment. Um, I just wanted to raise that. Um, so uh, we will now go to the closing of statement. Councillor Newell, do you wish to make any No, I'm happy statement? with it. Thank you, Mayor. All right. So I will put the motion and we'll ask each councillor to vote for or against um, this particular policy amendment that we have in front of us. Um, councillor Doyle. For, Mayor. Councillor Gibson. For, Mayor. Councillor Wilson. For. Councillor Lovell. For, Mayor. Councillor Newell. For. Councillor Campbell. Councillor Prince. For me. Thank you. Councillor O'May. For. Thank you. And the Mayor is for the amended recommendation. So that's all councillors present and the motion is carried. We now move on to um, the amended recommendation 17.015 forward slash 20D. And it reads that the infringement notice enforcement policy, Gov ENF 003, having been reviewed, be amended in accordance with the policy included as attachment D to this report for implementation. Um, can I have a mover, please? Thank you, Councillor Newell. A seconder, please. Uh, Councillor Prince. Councillor Gibbs. Yes, 
Uh, they're, they're very fast sitting around the table, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, Councillor Neil, do you have any opening statements? Uh, look, I'm happy with the, pol the amendments and, and the policy. I think it's a good one. Thank you. Um, I'll now ask for a comment um, or question from uh, other councillors. Councillor Doyle? Uh, no, not just at the moment. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. No comment. Thank you, Mayor. Councillor Wilson. No comment. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Lovell. No comment, Mayor. Councillor Campbell. Uh, just one comment, Mayor. Uh, I would like to see, and I know we can bring it back, but I do think, um, you know, uh, putting those three together and just making it a bit more succinct would be easier. Um, but yes, otherwise, thank you for um, that. No further comment. Thank you. Councillor Prince? Uh, no, no further comment. Thank you. Councillor O'May? Uh, no comment. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And I've already spoken on the previous report, so I don't need to do that again. Okay. Yes. Could I um, ask the, the director to make a, just a comment on why yeah. policies are on the three um, sure. sections? Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, General Manager Mayor. Um, yeah, just to clarify, so the, the first policy with the enforcement policy provides guidance on um, how enforcement action is undertaken. Uh, this policy that we're talking about now, which is outlined in the purpose of that policy and repeated in that summary, this is specifically to provide guidance on what to do when someone requests a withdrawal of an infringement notice or to um, vary their payment terms, and this provides specific guidance on that. So it's not enforcement in general and how and, and the um, principles under which that's undertaken. That's why it's a separate policy. This is specific guidance to what the general manager should do if somebody uh, either doesn't pay their infringement or challenges you in court or wants to vary their payment conditions but wants to withdraw the infringement. So the question, there's no association between the activities of those two policies? Oh, clearly, no association? Uh, clearly there's a, 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 an association, but they're, 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 they're not the same thing. <laughs> yeah, there's an association. Yeah. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you, General Manager. Okay, so um, would uh, Councillor Newell like to summarise at all? Uh, no, I think it's a good policy. And okay. All right, thank you. Uh, I'll now put the motion and we'll ask each um, councillor to vote for or against the motion. Um, councillor Doyle. For, Mayor. Councillor Gibson. For. Councillor Wilson. For, Mayor. Councillor Lovell. For, Mayor. Councillor Campbell. Oh, sorry, Councillor Newell. Apologies. For. Thank you. Councillor Campbell. For me. Councillor Prince. For. Councillor O'May. For. And the Mayor is for. That's all councillors present and the amended recommendation is carried. Thank you. So we now move on to amended recommendation 17.015 forward slash 20E. And it reads that the notice and order enforcement policy Gov ENF 002, having been reviewed, be amended in accordance with the policy included as attachment E to this report for implementation. Do we have a mover? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Sorry, Councillor Newell put his hand up. Um, Councillor May, would you like to be a seconder? Yes, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Councillor Newell, do you have any opening? No, I'm happy with it. All right. I'll now move to each councillor asking whether they have a comment or would like to ask a question regarding the amended recommendation. Councillor Doyle. Uh, no, I'm fine. Thanks, Mayor. Okay. Councillor Gibson. No, no comment. Thank you. Councillor Wilson. Thank you. Councillor Wilson. No, no comment. Thank you, Mayor. Councillor Lovell. No comment, Mayor. Councillor Neil. No comment, Mayor. Oh, sorry. Yes, that's right. I shouldn't count. It's all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Councillor Campbell. <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. Councillor Prince. No comment, Mayor. Councillor O'May. 
No comment. Thank you, Mayor. Council Neil, do you have any closing comments? Not at all. Okay. So I'll put the motion and we'll ask each councillor to vote either for or against the motion. Councillor Doyle. For, Mayor. Councillor Gibson. For. Councillor Wilson. For, Mayor. Councillor Lovell. For, Mayor. Councillor Neil. For. Councillor Campbell. For, Mayor. Councillor Prince. For. Councillor O'May. For, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, and the Mayor is for, that's all councillors present, and the motion is carried. We now move on to 17.015 uh, forward slash 20F amended recommendation before us is that the planning appeals policy, Gov Dev 005, having been reviewed, be amended in accordance with the policy. Uh, included as attachment F to this report for implementation. Do we have a councillor to move the motion? Yes, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Deputy Mayor Doyle. Well um, do we have a seconder? Yes, ma'am. Oh, councillor Prince had his hand yes, up, sorry. <laughs> councillor Prince will be the seconder for this one. Lucky me. Councillor Doyle, do you have any opening remarks? No, Mayor. I'll now um, go to each councillor to ask them whether they have a comment um, or would like to ask a question. Councillor Gibson? No comment, thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Wilson? No comment, thank you. Councillor Lovell? No, Mayor. Um, Councillor Newell? No, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Campbell? Oh, thank you. Councillor Fritz. No, no, thank you, Mayor. Councillor O'May. No comment, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Doyle, I have no comments. Um, Councillor Doyle, do you, do you wish to summarise at all? No, thank you, Mayor. All right, lovely. All right, so I'll put the motion and we'll ask each councillor to vote for or against the motion. Councillor Doyle. For. Councillor Gibson. For. Councillor Wilson. For. Councillor Lovell. For Mayor. Councillor Newell. For. Councillor Campbell. For. Councillor Prince. For. Councillor May. For. And the Mayor is for, so that's all councillors present and the motion is carried. The next amended recommendation we have in front of us is 17.0154 forward slash 20G, and it reads that the public open space policy, Gov Dev 001, having been reviewed, be amended in accordance with the policy included as attachment G to this report for the implementation. Do we have someone to move? I'll move it, ma'am. Thank you, Kat. She'll slow herself. Yeah, a seconder? Yep. Yes, yep. Councillor Newell. Yes, is, um, <laughs> Too slow, Uber. <laughs> uh, yeah. Councillor Newell seconded it. Councillor Wilson. I think it's straightforward. No, I think not Okay. Um, so we'll go to each councillor just to ask them uh, whether they would like to make a comment or ask a question regarding this. Um, councillor Doyle. No, thank you, Mayor. Councillor Gibson. Uh, yes, I have a couple of comments on this one. Thank you. Uh, in in 3.6, um, the cash contribution is to be based on the newly greater additional lot. I, I would like to see that um, more clearly written. I, I don't I don't follow it personally, um, and I was. Wondering either whether it could be simplified, clarified, or you can just tell me I'm, I should understand it, but I don't. And there's another point too, which is very simple, which is in point, point C, there's a spelling mistake. It's the five, uh, to be uh, five cent of the, um, five percent of the improved value, not valuer. 
which is a very minor point. I think the, uh, from what I understand, I guess it, it's the extra lot above the original one, but maybe the director could clarify. Uh, yeah, thank you, Councillor Gibson. I think that's a typo. That should the, the greater should be created, I believe. Ah, I wondered if that was the case. Yes, that that makes sense. No, so we can amend that. And sorry, what was the other one you noticed? There was another typo. I was saying. Uh, oh, yeah, point C. C improved yes. value up. Yes, correct. Value. No, I know, but. How do I safely make those corrections in this report whilst we're um, dealing with it? Yes. Yeah. Happy for that. Um, those amendments to be included as added to the amended recommendation. Thank you. Yep. So that's been added now. Thank you. Okay, um, Councillor Lovell. No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Neil. No, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Campbell. No, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Prince. A yeah, good spot, Paul. Well done. Councillor O'May. Uh, yes, Mayor. I was just wondering um, if you can expand on dot point D, establish parameters for determining whether the contribution should be taken as cash in lieu payments. Sorry, Mayor, I, I could answer that. Uh, um, the, that. That is as to whether we should take cash in lieu or actual land, the open space. Now, I guess we have to determine, is that open space required and would we use it for a strategic purpose or, or develop it for something, or are we better off taking cash in, in lieu and using that to put into a, uh, a recreational facility in the general area. Now, when we take cash in lieu uh, for public open space, it actually goes into a reserve, specifically reserved for those purposes. Can't be used for anything else. It has to be used for developing um, open space. Does that answer your question or would you do you need to ask, ask another one? Uh, that, that, no, that's great. That clarifies it. And um, uh, great policy and good thinking there. I mean, um, I'm really pro um, public open spaces uh, in the community for kids to get out and um, do outdoor activities. And uh, I think uh, the general managers touched on a very important point there. You can. Uh, focus more on, on um, areas that are a uh, greater communal asset to all areas as opposed to uh, potentially having some form of um, uh, proviso in an area that's not going to be frequented by so many people. Um, yeah, a great, uh, a great idea there and that's fine by me. Thanks very much. No more questions there. Thank you, Councillor O'May. Um, I don't have any questions either. So, just moving to Councillor Wilson to see if he wants to make a closing statement. No, that's fine, Mayor. Okay, so I offer the motion and we'll ask each councillor to vote for or against the motion. Uh, councillor Doyle. For, Mayor. Councillor Gibson. For, Mayor. Councillor Wilson. For, Mayor. Councillor Lovell. For, Mayor. Councillor Newell. For Mayor. Councillor Campbell. For Mayor. Councillor Prince. For Mayor. Thank you. Councillor O'May. For Mayor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I am for, so the Mayor's for it. So that's all councillors present and the motion is carried. We now move on to the amended recommendation 17.015 forward slash 20H. And it reads that the strata and stage development scheme policy Gov Dev 006 having been reviewed, be amended in accordance with the policy included as attachment H to this report implementation. Do we have someone to move? Level. Second. 
I have Councillor Prince, who is <coughs> moving. Uh, I then heard another voice after that, but then Councillor Wilson said he would second a seconder, and Councillor Wilson said he would second it. Okay. So, Councillor Prince, do you have any oh, opening no comment? No opening comment. All right. So we'll go straight to uh, the councillors, providing them an opportunity to uh, make a comment or ask a question. Councillor Doyle. No, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. No comment. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Wilson. No comment. Thank you. Councillor Level. No comment, Mayor. Councillor Newell. No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Campbell. No, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor May. No comment. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Prince, do you have any closing statements? I do not. Right. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. So I'll put the motion and we'll ask uh, each councillor whether they are for or against the motion. Uh, councillor Doyle. I'm for, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. For, Mayor. Councillor Wilson. For, Mayor. Councillor Lovell. For, Mayor. Councillor Newell. For, Mayor. Councillor Campbell. For, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Prince. Uh, for, Mayor. Councillor O'May. For, Mayor. And the Mayor is for, so that's all councillors present and the motion is carried. We now move to uh, the amended recommendation 17.015 forward slash 20i and it reads that the community infrastructure contribution policy gov cty 001 having been reviewed be amended in accordance with the policy included as attachment i to this report for implementation okay so, um, it's a community infrastructure contribution policy. And do we have a mover? Move the move. Second. Oh. Really? I'm going to have to be a bit fair. Seconder? Prince. Uh, Councillor Prince has just said seconder. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Councillor Wilson. No, thank you, Mayor. It's quite straightforward. Okay, so we'll go to each councillor and ask them for a whether they'd like to make a comment or ask a question. And so we'll go to Councillor Doyle first. No, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. Sorry, can I just clarify which one we're up to? Yes, uh, we're up to the Community Infrastructure Contribution Policy. Okay. No, no comment. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Wilson. Oh, sorry, you've got, you have another opportunity later on. Councillor Lovell. No comment, Mayor. Okay. Councillor Newell. No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Campbell. No comment, Mayor. Right. Councillor Prince. No comment, Mayor. Councillor O'May. No comment, Mayor. Okay. All right. And the Mayor has no comments either. Uh, Councillor Wilson, do you have any closing comments? No, thank you, ma'am. Okay, so um, I put the motion uh, and we'll ask each councillor to vote for or against the motion. Councillor Doyle. For, ma'am. Councillor Gibson. For. Councillor Wilson. For, ma'am. Councillor Lovell. For, ma'am. Councillor Newell. For, ma'am. Councillor Campbell. For, ma'am. Councillor Prince. Yeah. Councillor O'May. Four, Mayor. And the Mayor is four, and that's all councillors present, and the motion is carried. I'm very conscious of uh, providing the opportunity for our dial ins at home as well to be able to move motions. That's what fairness is. Um, and um, so they have an opportunity because maybe they might want to talk to theirs as well, you know. All right. Thank you very much for those that are present here and um, and for your enthusiasm for moving and seconding. All right. So we now have uh, the amended recommendation before us, which is 17.015 forward slash 20J, the temporary occupancy of buildings policy as included as attachment J to this report be rescinded and removed 
from Council's website. Um, do we have a mover? Online? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Councillor Gibson. Um, sorry, is that Councillor Lovell? You will second. Yes, please. All right. Okay, Councillor Gibson, do you have any opening comments? I'd like to defer this for a discussion, actually, if possible. I'm aware that um, the Building Act um, has changed, and the role of the general manager has changed with regard to this. But I know that there's a lot of um, people in the Huon Valley who um, live in, in sheds on the land while they build their houses. And I'd like to be able to explore the possibilities of, um, even if it's not under the Building Act, of, of uh, maintaining a temporary occupancy of buildings policy in some form. Um, yeah, especially post COVID nineteen, I think we're we're going to move into a period where uh, every habitable space that's cheap is going to be required. And apart from the obvious issues of sewerage and maybe um, some conflicts with neighbours, which could easily be resolved by the temporary nature of the of an occupancy, I think uh, it would be good to all sit around and the table and see if we can't formulate a policy on the back of this that that um, resolves that issue. So, Councillor Gibson, there's there certainly are policies within um, local councils that, that deal with what you're talking about, but the general manager um, does need to provide a response. Um, to your particular question on, on whether this can be delayed or reversed, anything like that. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, uh, I, I guess to put it simply, um, general managers don't have the power to issue temporary occupancy of buildings anymore. It now has to be a building surveyor and um, the, the Building Act has, Act has just taken those powers away from general managers or councils, so we're not authorised to actually um, do that. That's why this policy is um, recommended for rescinding. Because it no, no longer accurately yeah. reflects. I just simply don't have any powers to, to actually issue a yeah. temporary occupancy permit. So it's, you understand that, that that's a legislative thing? Yeah, so, I was wondering yeah. whether, whether Outside, outside the building code, you know, whether there's um, a way, I mean, that was what I was wanting to explore, the possibility of... Well, perhaps of, we can ex uh, uh, explore that. People. Yeah. Can we explore that outside of the meeting? Because that doesn't um, uh, directly relate to the, the fact that we're rescinding this policy. Um, and I think you've already said that you would, you would like to just discuss it out. Um, the particular matters that you're concerned about. But the general manager has advised that um, he doesn't have the, um, no, the, the authority any no, longer no. because of the changes in the legislation. So, um, and we are dealing with that matter in itself tonight um, with this particular mm -hmm. amendment. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, I'll just move on to. Uh, the other councillors to see whether they want to ask, uh, make a comment or ask a question regarding this. Um, Deputy Mayor Doyle. Um, I, I can understand what, where Paul's coming from, um, but it is an act and maybe Paul, if we, if you have, we have an issue with this, we need to take it up with the state government because that's where this come from, Emilio, uh, General Manager, is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is actually a um, uh, an act that's set, set out yep. by the state government. Yeah. Um, yep. the, you know, the CBOS administer it. This policy yep. mm -hmm. guides us on how we would go about issuing one if we could. But mm -hmm. that's the thing we can no longer issue. Yep. Those okay. Thank you. Thanks for that. No, no Thank more, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councillor Wilson. No, thank you, Mayor. Councillor Lovell. No comment, Mayor. 
Thank you. Councillor Newell? No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Campbell? Uh, just one comment. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, uh, as we've discussed, I think it would be good to have an opportunity to speak about something regarding the temporary occupancy. I know that the GM doesn't have that control anymore, but um, recognising affordable housing and people living the way they are, I think we need to have something that we can deal with, uh, with what possibly may come from from the COVID impacts. So just, um, just wanting to flag that, uh, but no more comment. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Prince? No comment, Matt. Councillor O'May? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I uh, actually agree with uh, Councillor Gibson. Uh, under the current uh, climate that we're in at the moment, I believe that uh, that uh, we should make a formal approach to the state government to be able to waiver this, uh, this uh, legislation in some form or another. Uh, I, there's going to be a lot of people out there in difficulty and um, and I believe by uh, getting them to um, to uh, push themselves into uh, a greater financial hardship to uh, to finish um, a building application uh, is either going to do a, a few things. One, have them cut costs and probably not um, come up with a greater expenditure as they probably could in the long run and end up with a, uh, a less satisfactory product or to um, put him, uh, putting them under some other form of financial hardship in other areas where uh, um, they tend to take risks or whatnot um, or have to move on. So um, I think he has a lot of merit in what he's suggesting. And um, uh, I know, as our GM suggested, that it's out of his hands. I just think as so we should put some sort of a recommendation up that why this COVID thing's on and we get our economy back on track, that they have some sort of form of discretion, whether it's be given back to the council or uh, on a, uh, a statewide basis. I don't really know, but I know under the current climate, a lot of people have to finish their housing um, permits off by the end of this year, otherwise they've got to pay up more money, I think, under this sort of a climate that there should be at least another extension or looking at another extension. Um, so, um, yeah, well, that's that's just my uh, my view on things. So, But there's ob obviously got to be a, uh, a point where somebody can determine whether somebody's just um, squatting or recklessly doesn't want want to complete their application because um, it's not convenient. So how do you adjudicate that? I don't really know. But um, anyway, that's my view on things. A good thank, point, thank, Paul. Thank, thank you. Uh, the director would like to respond as well. Thank you. Yeah, just, just a point of clarification. Um, so residents can still get a temporary occupancy. It's just that council no longer has the powers to issue them they must be issued by a building surveyor. So temporary occupancies aren't gone, they're just council doesn't have the power to issue them a building surveyor. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, yes, yes, he's going to have an opportunity to close. I'm just checking. Everybody's had an opportunity to talk. Uh, if there are no further questions, then Councillor Gibson, who moved it, can close. There are no further questions. Councillor Gibson, you can um, close. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a question back to the director there. Um, I, I guess my feeling is that um, most surveyors are not going to provide that sort of um, temporary occupancy. Would you, is that what, what you understand? I mean, it's, there, um, there's no, no, no. such a risk of a bunch. Um, no, Castle Gibson, no, they, they, they do issue them quite regularly. I mean, obviously, they have their checks and balances the same as what the GM should have if he was to issue them in, in ensuring that it's, it's safe and, you know, not posing a, a, a health risk or those sorts of factors. Um, but, yeah, they, they certainly do. Um, they're issued reasonably regularly by business 
All right. Thank you. No, no more comment on that then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Director, as well, for your response. All right. So um, I will put the motion and we'll ask each councillor to vote for or against the motion. Councillor Doyle. For Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. For Mayor. Councillor Wilson. For Mayor. Councillor Lovell. For Mayor. Councillor Newell. For Mayor. Councillor Campbell. For me. Councillor Prince. For me. Councillor O'May. For me. And the Mayor is for. That's all councillors present and the motion is carried. And that report is complete. <laughs> Thank you for that, and thank you for the general manager and directors for responding to our questions. Uh, we now move to the report, annual food safety report, July 2019 to June 2020, agenda number 17.016 forward slash 20. Do we have a councillor to move the motion? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, councillor Doyle. A seconder, please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Councillor Wilson has already responded. Um, Councillor Doyle, would you ha do you have any opening remarks, please? No, Mayor. Uh, thank you. I now ask each councillor to make a comment and or ask a question. Councillor Lovell? No comments, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor O'May? No comments, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Doyle? No comment, Mayor. Oh, sorry, my apologies. You are the one that moved the motion. I will yeah. come back to you. <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you. Councillor Newell? Uh, no comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Gibson? No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Campbell? No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Wilson? No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Fritz? No comment, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple of questions. So in the attachment, pages two to eight, um, there is a rating system of P1 to P4. However, I couldn't find the key to explain what these classifications mean, and I was just hoping you'd be able to explain to me, please. Yes, so uh, it's, it's effectively a, a risk classification. So P1 is the highest risk priority one, P4 is the lowest risk oh. uh, priority four. Um, yeah, I understand that attachment is not terribly easy to read, but it's a prescribed form that we just have to fill out as is. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, I only need to ask the question once. <laughs> so that's tough. Thank you. Um, and uh, just another question. Um, were there any things to non-compliance identified um, for possible education? Um, look, I guess not specifically, as you, you probably noticed, there's only uh, one wing letter and one group of those issues. Um, I guess historically it's, it's cleanliness and temperature control that are probably the main things that come up um, as, as, as issues. Um, yeah, look, with regards to education, I mean, that's, they, they, the EHOs definitely take that educated approach, um, even when they're doing inspections, mm. so they'll talk people through that sort of stuff. But they also run, um, there's an online food handling course that we have on our website that, 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 that um, we pay for as a service. Yeah. Um, and if food registration applicants don't demonstrate a, a good understanding of food safety, um, they're, they're forced to undertake that training as part of their food registration. Uh, they also run some training courses with people at the Trade Training Centre in the high schools and so on around yeah. state food training. Yeah. Uh, that's great. And look, I just wanted to compliment um, your officer, Amigo. It seems everywhere I go, um, and, it, and he's often confused with Amigo. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amigo is confused for Amigo, but no, um, they, it's definitely around health matters. Yeah. But Amigo always has such a, a lovely compliments um, about the way he interacts with, with businesses. And um, so I just wanted to acknowledge that so that you can pass that on. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so um, Councillor Doyle, do you have any closing comments? Uh, no, Mayor, thank you. Okay. So I'll put the motion and we'll ask each council to state whether they are for or against the motion. Deputy Mayor Doyle. For Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Newell. For Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. 
Four Mayor. Four Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Campbell. Four Mayor. Councillor Wilson. Four Mayor. Councillor Prince. Four Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Lovell. Four Mayor. Thank you. Councillor O'May. Councillor O'May. Um, hey, I think I don't think uh, Councillor May is at the end of the line at this very minute, so we'll need to keep pushing on. Oh, 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 just in the nick of time, Councillor May. I've got your four down there. So the mayor is four. That's all councillors present, and the motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, we now move to the Recreational Water Quality Report, July 2, 2019 to June 2, 2020, agenda number 17.017 forward slash 20. Do we have a councillor to move the motion? Councillor Lovell. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Lovell. A seconder? Prince. Councillor Prince. Councillor Lovell, do you have any opening comments? Um, just so I, I can see where um, problems have been rectified. So um, it's, yeah, that's all good. Thank you very much. I will now ask each councillor to make a comment or have an opportunity to ask a question. Uh, councillor O'May. Uh, no comment, thank you, mate. All right, thank you. Deputy Mayor Doyle. Oh, sorry, no, Mayor. Thank no you. No comment. Thank you. Councillor Newell. Uh, no, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. No comment, thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Campbell? No, thank you, Mayor. Councillor Wilson? No, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Prince? No, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I just have one question. Uh, in the attachment numbers 2.0, monitoring of recreational waters and 4.0, recreational water sampling conclusions, just because it sort of talks about signage. And I know we're pretty big around the place. You know, we've got lots of areas to monitor. How often would council officers monitor our beaches to ensure that the appropriate signage is in place? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. They do a formal check at the start of summer of mm -hmm. signage, but they do some other informal opportunistic checks when they're in the area throughout the year, or otherwise if people report, um, you know, a, a damaged sign or so on. But, yeah, they do their formal check at the start of each summer. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Okay, so back to Councillor Lovell. Um, any closing statements? No, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. So I'll put the motion. We'll ask each councillor to vote for or against the motion. Uh, Deputy Mayor Doyle? For, Mayor. Councillor Neil? For. Councillor Gibson? For, Mayor. Councillor Campbell? For, Mayor. Councillor Wilson? For, Mayor. Councillor Prince? For, Mayor. Councillor Lovell? Four, Mayor. Councillor O'May? Four. And the Mayor is four. That's all, Councillors present, and the motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, we now go on to uh, the uh, report review asset management policy, agenda number 18.004-20. Do we have a Councillor to move a motion? Yep. Councillor Neil? Good, four, Mayor. A seconder, please. Councillor Lovell. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Lovell is seconding. Uh, Councillor Neil, do you have any opening remarks? No, Mayor. Okay. So I'll now e ask each councillor to make a comment or have an opportunity to ask a question. Uh, Deputy Mayor Doyle? Uh, no comment, thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Neil? Oh, sorry, you moved it. My apologies. Councillor Gibson? Um, I do have one thing I, I would like to amend, if possible, on um, page uh, six of eight, I guess it is, um, where it says climate change adaptation is considered in asset management. I was wondering if we shouldn't have, considering climate change adaptation, mitigation and waste management policies, because those three policies all play into how you manage assets. 
particularly the waste management, you know, if we're if we're looking to purchase things that are have longevity, you know, that's where we you get less wastage going into the system and um, yeah, so seeing as those three policies are all in train, it would be good to have them in there. Okay, perhaps we'll that's the director. Sorry, uh, Councillor Gibson, could you just mention what you are asking to include again? It was the climate change adaptation. It, it, yeah, in, in point 4.1.4, .4, implementing sound asset management plans and strategies, um, you know, t taking into account um, climate change adaptation, mitigation, and waste management policies or strategies. Can, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, we've got, we, we need to go through um, the process yet. Um, Deputy Mayor Doyle of the, not ready to ask questions just at this moment, if that's all right. Um, so is that, does the, it's Len, that, that, yeah. Would you, would you like to respond at all? Uh, thank you, Beth, for you, I'll try to respond. Mm. Um, that dot point um, regarding climate change adaptation in asset management planning, it is my thought that's in there in regards to where we place assets to ensure that they're not inundated by um, sea level rise, um, landslip, um, any other environmental conditions or climate change condition that's going to affect the life of the asset is my understanding of that dot point. Ah, okay. So just to clarify with Councillor Gibson, your, your suggested amendment relates to uh, a greater than the placement of assets, like location of assets. Is, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it takes, takes into account the whole, mm. the whole issue. Mayor, might I suggest yes. that we do have the climate change strategy, which will have um, adaptation and mitigation plans, mm. and we will have a waste management strategy uh, being developed at the moment that this be considered in in those, rather than try to build it into a uh, an asset management strategy. I was oh, wondering if we could just reference reference the. the those strategies and so that maybe as you say I mean I can understand why you wouldn't want to put the policy but you want the strategies in there. The general so, manager and I are just talking about where it could be referenced. So um, in related documents there could be reference points there um, however they are very much asset based um, plans
on. Put back on. Uh, sorry, uh, through you, Mayor. I, I did ask Councillor Gibson um, with this. What I guess what what is yeah, yeah. the the purpose and the objective um, to to add that into that policy? Well, I think all all um, decisions on assets need to take those three things into account. Climate change is going to be the low cost yes. all the policies. Right yes. Cost. Yeah. Yes, so right. I can un I understand where he's coming from. It's just whether we we are at that stage to actually go right across. Yes, uh, I can see that um, climate change adaptation and mitigation would could fall into that point. But I guess waste management is um, and its own strategy is being developed at the moment, and to uh, put it into this uh, this policy without that document being completed, I, I yeah. think is probably a little premature at this point in time. Yeah, yeah. You, you, need to have a, yeah, yeah. you need to have a physical document yeah. in place to be able to refer to it. So, um, because we do have the climate change mitigation um, strategy, then that is that's been endorsed, so that is something that can be referred to, as the general manager said. Yeah. yeah. So happy to have that bit in. But okay. I think waste management probably is a bit okay. premature. Okay, okay. fair enough. enough. Yeah. So climate change, it might be simply just to remove the word adaptation if that's the desire. So it's just simply says climate change is considered an asset management plan. Mm -hmm. Did you did you hear that, uh, Councillor Gibson? Um, instead of actually labelling well, adaptation. Well, I don't know. Yes, I did, I did, hear, I did hear that. Um, I mean, yeah. we've made a council um, decision yeah. to split those, so I think we should probably stick with with mentioning them both rather than... Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. And once again, are you happy for us to make that amendment to this yeah. policy? Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Campbell? No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Wilson? No comment. Thank you. Councillor Prince is uh, just returning to the room. I'll wait for him to sit down. That's been recorded. Councillor Prince, would you like to make any comment or ask a question? Uh, no, thank you, Mayor. Okay. Uh, Councillor Lovell? No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor O'May? Uh, no comment, Mayor. Thank you. And I don't have any comment either. Um, so, uh, just back to Councillor O'Neill, any closing comments? No comment, Mayor. Thank you. I'll put the motion and we'll ask each councillor to vote for or against the motion. Deputy Mayor Doyle? For, Mayor. Councillor O'Neill? For. Councillor Gibson? For, Mayor. Councillor Campbell? For, Mayor. Councillor Wilson? For, Mayor. Councillor Prince? Councillor Lovell? For Mayor. Councillor O'May? For. And the Mayor is for. That's all councillors present and the motion is carried. <coughs> uh, so we move on to the next report, the Tree Management Policy Review, Infrastructure Services, Agenda Number 18.005 forward slash 20. Do we have a council to move a motion? Yes, Mayor. Yes, ma <laughs> I think Councillor Doyle got in first, uh, and someone to second, please. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Councillor Prince will second. Councillor Doyle, do you have any opening comments? Yes, Mayor. I just um, I've read the twos and fro's today on um, on this policy. Um, I'm quite happy. As it reads at the moment, um, I have a lot of um, people come to me and say that they're losing control of what's on their own land. And I know that we have to have rules, but um, I'm quite happy for it to stay as it is. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Councillor Campbell? Yes, Matt. Councillor Doyle? Yes, Matt. Councillor Prince? Yes, Matt. 
Thank you. May, uh, just on the white reads, can I, can yes. I just point out, we, we have found a typo in this one. Um, in um, page 606G, text the uh, one, two, three, fourth dot point, where it uh, says does not conform to council street tree policy, it should say street tree selection. Um, and also, um, where it says removal of non diseased and non dangerous trees, um, second line down, uh, it, it, second sentence in, it says if a tree is causing problems, and it actually says for a particular resident, um, we thought it probably ought to come out and not just be about a resident mm. um, and just take that section out and just all possible solutions to be explored to resolve the problem. So we'd like to make those um, corrections. Mm. Just while, yeah, just to bring to council's attention if that's okay. Yeah. yeah. So, does it, do you mean if a tree is causing problems, all possible oh, yes. solutions will be explored to resolve yeah. the problem rather yeah, so than remove the than, tree? Yeah. A bit broader than if it's just yeah. a resident. Yeah. So, yep, so, could I? Yes. Uh, through you, Mayor, um, identify that in case it was a pedestrian or walker or a visitor, not just a resident, so anybody who actually might um, have a concern about a tree, not just a resident. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm happy with those amendments. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, all right. So uh, I will now ask each councillor to make a comment or ask a question. Councillor Newell. No, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. Um, look, I think that there's some, it's, as I, I sent an email around, because I, I think there's clarity on this these issues is really important. Otherwise, it, the council just gets caught in the in between. So, and I still don't think it's, it's a bit hard with not that adjustments that the general manager mentioned. But I still don't think that the that the um the sufficient clarity in in that, and it's open to you know. Uh, Council basically being being put in a difficult position with residents claiming that you know something's unsafe or at the, the the issue about the history of the dropping limbs. You know, it's not the history of the dropping of the limbs; it's actually the potential for dropping limbs in the future. There's a whole lot of little things there. So I would much prefer to um, defer this if possible and do a little bit more work on it. Okay, so I need to go back to um, the mover um, and the seconder, I believe, um, to see whether they are um, willing to put forward that this be deferred. No, Mayor, I'm sorry. I'm happy for it to go through tonight. Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay, uh, so we now go to Councillor Campbell. Sorry, no comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Wilson? No comment, Mayor. Councillor Prince? Uh, no, no comment on this one, Mayor. Councillor Lovell? No comment, Mayor. Councillor Homey? Uh, yes, Mayor. Um, I agree with, um, with uh, Councillor Doyle in regards to um, uh, the frustrations with people not being in control of their property, specifically on a farm. It's um, very difficult to, to uh, have an infrastructure that's um, predetermined by somebody else in a lot of regards. Most farmers are very good conservationists and, uh, and um, uh, are unaware of what a lot of the rules and regulations are and that are put on them. But also in regards to um, to uh, some of what I've read today, uh, um, I I wouldn't like to see a uh, an arborist have too much influence in regards to what council um, planners or uh, management are able to override, I think an arborist should be able to give 
a professional opinion, uh, but I really feel that it's in some regards, if an arborist w was potentially to be biased, it might not be in the better interest of the community. Um, can I, can I, um, sorry, Councillor May, Councillor May, can I just, can I just confirm a couple of things here? Um, the tree management policy relates to council owned land. Um, it's, uh, this is not about having, uh, council having rights over private property. This is to do with the trees on council owned land. The other thing is, is that um, on page, so if I'm just going to refer to uh, the gentleman, on page six of six of the actual policy, it states that council must engage an arborist uh, in the process. Um, assessment. assessment will be undertaken by an experienced and qualified person. Yeah. So just to bring this policy sort of, I suppose, back on track to what, what this is about, is that it is about council owned land and it's about council having... Um, making decisions on council owned land and it's about working with community who might want to do something on council owned land. Um, I just thought I should um, confirm that um, at this point in time. Yeah, thank you. I, I, under, I, understand exact, I understand exactly what you're saying there, but I mean, yeah. council owned land is owned by the people. So, um, um, you know, like, and there was a couple of quotes in there that there might be a, a, a project of significance um, proposed but you uh, you're not allowed to go on with it because there's already a tree planted in the place that you you're proposing to put it because it's, it quotes existing tree so uh, uh, Have you, do you want to ref can you reference where you are reading please for for the uh, for the staff uh, as well. I can't go to it now. I read it today in um, in my reading somewhere. I can't go straight to uh, it at the moment, but uh, I know I read it there today. So, uh, okay. but anyway, I just uh, agree with um, with uh, what Councillor Doyle suggested, and I think the management should have much more of a, a say in regards to what goes. So. Um, Okay. Uh, all the information should, should, should be put before the directors and the managers and they have the final outcome. So I, don't, I have no other further comment there. Okay. I think uh, the director just wants to make a comment, Director of Infrastructure. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Through you, um, I just wanted to uh, clarify that um, Council do have on staff a uh, qualified and certified person to make assessment of trees. We make many assessments throughout the year on um, hazardous trees. Some reports come back and say that um, with a recommendation that it may just need a trim. Um, other, re other recommendations come back and say it must be felled. Um, that is authorised by me only as a director. Um, and uh, before I make that, uh, put my signature on it, I also engage with our NRM officer um, for him to go through that report as well. Um, I believe he is, um, has a lot of experience in that area, so um, he also assists in my decision. Um, and I just want to make a point that we actually do work with the public. Um, in Signet, with some street trees there, we actually work with them on the ideal location for them, so they're not going to get, interfere with any services, and they're actually on our land, not on private land. So uh, that's something that, that happens all the time. So. Um, if that would uh, help allay any of the uh, councillors' concerns that, um, that if they've got any queries about that. Oh, thank you. All right. Um, now, is there a further question before I have... Because once I speak, then it goes straight back to the mover. Uh, yes, Councillor Gibson. Um, I, still, I still think there's... Uh an issue with the, this point G and I was wondering if I could ask the director. Um, it, it says that a, a resident, if a resident requests the removal and it, it meets any one of the criteria, 
um, the council will go ahead and program the removal of the tree. Is it is it the director's experience that you know if if a resident wants to remove one of our council trees, they they can generally find something in here that uh, justifies the removal of the tree. That's I guess that's the question. Is is this sufficiently tight that it comes down to the council's arborist to to make sensible decisions about trees, which, which is what I think should happen. Um, yes. Thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, thanks for, for asking that question, Councillor Gibson. Um, when there are um, perhaps political or other means for somebody wanting to move a tree, I engage a third party, an independent um, arborist to actually write the report for me. Um, because I don't want our arborist or myself to be put in a precarious position um, that um, we are favouring um, our own opinions. Um, I will go by the, the qualified person's um, report. Um, if, it, if it is in poor health and it can't be resurrected and it could be a danger, that puts this council at a very high risk of, um, of litigation, uh, which we want to avoid. So. Um, those dog points, it's very unlikely to remove a tree and, unless it is um, any, of those, any of those items or a combination of them, but uh, um, I, I am reluctant to remove a tree. In fact, I've refused to remove trees that um, people have wanted to uh, because the tree is in very good health and very good vigour. So I, I didn't see that that um, part in the policy about the, the third party arborist. That sounds like a very good uh, method. Is that is that somewhere in the policy here that I missed? Uh, well, yes, in the um, in D paragraph three at the end of that paragraph, the assessment will be undertaken by an experienced and qualified person. I don't actually say whether it's an internal or external, yeah. but. But I, I've managed the risk by uh, determining whether it can be done by our internal uh, qualified person, or I feel that there's uh, we can mitigate mitigate some of the risk by getting an external. I mean, a, a tree report uh, costs somewhere around four hundred fifty to five hundred dollars plus travel. So if I get a report for Southport, um, we're talking about um, a lot of money, but um, sometimes that money is well spent. Um, if I find that there might become some sort of allegation that that we uh, that our report has been favoured for any reason. All right. I hope that helps. Thank your you. Experience, your, yeah. That's okay. a question only. <laughs> yeah. It was a question. Yes. In your, I guess in in your experience, Len, the the these like if you don't get find these dot points in, in G get um, manipulated to, to justify the removal tree. Like, you know, just the roots disturbing a fence seems to me like a very minor sort of thing. Um, or the history of dropping limbs. I mean, under this policy, a resident should be able, would be able to come back and say, well, it's got a history of dropping limbs, therefore, by this policy, it can be. It has to be removed by council. That's. The, I guess that's the point that I'm trying to rectify. Yeah. It becomes a, a, a legal matter as well, Councillor Gibson. That if we're causing damage to somebody's property because of one of our assets, and a tree is an asset, um, we are liable for actually making that right. Uh, if it's if it's a fence and we have the ability to rebuild the fence for them and and build over the root system or something like that, that's the first option that we will take rather than uh, removing a healthy tree. Um, there's an example where there was a, a request to uh, remove a tree uh, because um, its root system was penetrating the banks of a, of a dam. The dam had been there for significantly longer than these trees, uh, and those three trees removed because of that, because I was managing the liability of council if that dam was to burst and uh, the tree roots would cause 
um, found to be the cause, which was quite, quite evident when it was inspected. So um, I think what you're suggesting as well, uh, Councillor Gibson, is um, quite would be quite a considerable amount of changes because it's uh, involved in an assessment process that's um, already embedded uh, in practice. And if there was to be significant changes, then it would need to come back to council um, and perhaps uh, you could speak to the general manager at a later time about those concerns because you've tried to defer the, uh, defer the decision and that's been declined. Um, and uh, we could be here for a long time and we're not going to be. Um, so uh, not on this discussing this one anymore. Um, so I can see that Deputy Mayor Doyle has a, a question and then I will um, uh, make my comment and then we will go to a closing of it. Deputy Mayor Doyle, you will get to close because um, you did move. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, look, um, I, I do share some of the concerns that have been raised by um, Councillor Gibson, uh, but probably more so I see opportunity um, to actually um, add value to the policy through some of the limited research I've done so far, and I would like an opportunity to talk to the general manager and the uh, and director Len Bester at some stage about those, and um, but I accept that um, the, what I'm hearing from most of the councillors, majority of councillors, is that they are happy to um, endorse this policy tonight, um, and uh, it it might just be Councillor Gibson and I that um, provide some feedback. Um, uh, I, no chance, because oh. I'm oh, okay. up. yeah, yeah. So. Um, we, that's all I have to say. We now go to Councillor Doyle, um, who can make a closing remark. Thank yep. you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just want to make that note that the more complicated we make it with the re with red tape, we have the, the, the man at Margate that um, was killed by a tree. I know it was a state growth um, road, but the, the harder we make it, for trees to be removed. No one wants to remove a tree that's good. But I tell you what, if it was my fence that the tree or my shed that the tree was falling on, I wouldn't be real happy. So I think we've got to take into everyone's um, opinions and on this issue. So yeah, thank you very much, Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Deputy Mayor Doyle. All right, so I'll put the motion. I will ask each councillor to state whether they are for or against the motion. Deputy Mayor Doyle. I'm for. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Neil. For. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. I'll go again. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Campbell. Again. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Wilson. For. Thank you. Councillor Prince. For, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Lovell. For, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor May. Councillor O'May. Four minutes, sorry. Thank that's okay, thank you. And the mayor is against. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, four, and three against, and the motion is carried. Thank you, everyone. And thank you once again to our um, directors and general manager for getting involved in that discussion. Okay, so uh, we're going to the next report, Community Engagement Summer Report on the Dry Franklin Master Plan Stage 3, Sporting Precinct, Agenda Number 19.018 forward slash 20. And do we have a councillor to move the motion? Yes, uh, we have. We have Councillor Neil to move the motion. I'll second that one. Uh, okay, and um, I didn't even get to ask. <laughs> we might have to ask, I think, because there are others. Um, and uh, someone to... Moment, Sorry, we've got a disconnect, have we? No, this is the um, uh, motion that um, has been... Oh, it. yes, certainly, that's Sorry, right, just, which is um, Councillor Prince. Up on that myself. Um, so you know, this motion was actually deferred Lovell? from the June yep. meeting. It was moved by Councillor Lovell, oh, seconded yes. by Councillor Prince. Beautiful. Uh, because it was deferred, we basically come back to yes. yep, the situation where it's um, 
technical okay. motion has been moved and seconded. Mm -hmm. um, we do have an addendum with a amended recommendation that has to be put to move and seconder if they'll actually want to accept that. So the amended recommendation. So, um, Councillor Lovell, um, I'm I'm pitching this to you and to um, Councillor Prince. Um, um, the so amended, okay. The amended. Sorry. sorry, did you hear what? Are you right? Okay, beautiful. Right. So the amended recommendation that is before you is that a. The report on the Community Engagement Summary Report on the Draft Franklin Master Plan Stage 3, Sporty Precinct, be received and noted. B. The Draft Revised Franklin Master Plan Stage 3, Sporty Precinct Rev.2, included in Attachment E of this report, is adopted for implementation within the budget allocation. And C. The report on the Community Engagement Summary Report on the Draft Franklin Master Plan Stage 3, Sporting Precinct being made available to the public on the Council website. May I also mention that yes. in the attachments there there is a, um, um, there should be a revised master plan that has been sent to the Council. Oh yes, the plan, the, yes. the map. Yep. Yes. So that's what the new um, amended recommendation is in reference to. Yes, that's correct. Yes. So, um, Councillor Lovell, um, as the mover formally, um, do you um, accept that amended recommendation? Yes, I accept that, Mayor. Right. And the seconder, Councillor Prince? Yes, I accept it. You accept it? Okay. So now we can discuss. Um, thank you very much, General Manager. Thank you. Uh, do you have any opening comments, Councillor Lovell? Um, yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, so, you know, we were contacted by a representative from the Cricket Club um, and they've, they've done a lot of work with Council on um, the placement of the nets and the, uh, the, the whole plan um, overall anyway. And um, they were willing to um, have this compromise with the nets. So I'm happy, I'm happy with it. And I, I think there's been a long enough discussion on it um, and um, long enough, you know, with our staff working on this and the hours that it's taken. So, yeah, I'm happy with what's in front of us. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'll now ask each councillor to make a comment or ask a question. Uh, we'll go to Councillor Gibson, please. Um, yes. Uh, well, I'm aware that there are still complaints about the nets obscuring the river. I'm also aware that, um, as Councillor Lovell says, the, there's been a lot of consultation, and I think this is a good compromise position. Um, it's not perfect, but um, I guess that's never the, really the case with a compromise. Thank, thank you. Councillor Campbell? Uh, yes, Mayor, similar uh, lines to um, both Councillor Lovell and Councillor Gibson, um, concerns still being raised to me about the um, nets obscuring the river, and it's um, obviously been, you know, a lot of work done to reach a compromise. And um, hopefully, as time goes on, um, people will be able to accept, you know, that it has to be a compromise. So, no more comment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wilson? It's all about compromise, Mayor, and I think that that's happened down in some. Thank you. Councillor Prince? Uh, yeah, well done to the Cricket Club, uh, in particular for willing to compromise on that. I know they've put a lot of work over a long time period through this one, and to be willing to compromise actually shows a lot of maturity from the club. Uh, and I think the result we have there is arguably the best result for the community. So well done, everyone. Thank you. Councillor O'May? Uh, yes, Mayor. Um, I'd like to congratulate the staff all involved. The breakfast crew have done an amazing job here. It's been a, uh, a long haul and um, obviously it's not uh, perfect for uh, either side, but at the end of the day, we've come up with uh, something that fits all and um, 
great effort and look forward to seeing it uh, implemented. Thank, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Doyle? Uh, yes, Mayor, thank you. Um, I've received quite a few phone calls over this and for and against, um, more for it. Um, and I respect the people that have an issue with the, the looking at the nets, but as we've all said, compromise is the number one thing here. And I think that, yeah, we need to move forward. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Newell. Uh, great compromise and great result. Thank you. Um, yes, just, just to reiterate that I've had a, a couple of calls as well, just for the, for the new release of the plan. Um, and I just wanted to voice that here to acknowledge those people that didn't take the time to contact me, um, even though they might not have been supportive of the, of the new location. Uh, but they did seem to understand that it's a challenge uh, uh, no matter what, um, to find the right location for them. Um, so we appreciate that. Um, just a couple of questions, if I may. Um, number 34 in the report refers to um, further consultation with the community and the RSL uh, that needs to occur. Um, just through the general manager to the director, is, is there a, do you have a likely sort of period of time that that might occur or? No. Um, thanks, Mayor, we don't. That potential relocation was obviously something to come up through the engagement process. Um, and I, you know, we've recognised that it's worth exploring, um, but we haven't seen it within the time frame where we work plan to do yeah. the next 12 months. Yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, and just in relation to those community members that had concerns for asbestos disturbance, um, do we know what depth, if any, that there's going to be excavation work to occur in the, at the location, the new location of the cricket nets. There won't be any excavation for the nets. Beautiful, thank you. Um, and okay, in uh, number two on the uh, on the map, it indicates work to be completed that doesn't doesn't although it doesn't eliminate parking, it does seem to reduce the parking area. Um, Will we be notifying regular users of any that particular parking yeah. area? So as we get to that stage um, and develop up a project plan for that area, the communication and engagement with those key users and um, the surrounding users and clubs will be involved at that. Stage. So is it likely they would get about six months' notice or something like that of the change of it that to occur? Depending on the work schedule for it. So three to three to six months. Yeah. All right. Tough. Thank you. Um, and just in reference to number nine in the map that indicates the interpretation um, panels, just checking that the any work that's done will be com complementary to the existing Franklin history wall. Yes, yeah, so um, the designs and the layout will complement what's already in yeah. place down there with the interpretation. Yeah. Across Beautiful. The and that, that answers all the questions that people have asked me, so thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Um, so now, um, now that I've asked my question, uh, does Councillor Lovell want to have any closing remarks? Um, no, thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Okay. So I'll now ask each councillor, um, I'll put the motion, should I say, and we'll ask each councillor to state whether they are for or against the motion. Uh, Deputy Mayor Doyle? For, Mayor. Councillor Neal? For me. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. For. Councillor Campbell. For. Councillor Wilson. For. Councillor Prince. For me. Councillor Lovell. For me. Councillor O'May. For. And the Mayor is for. That's all councillors present and the motion is carried. Thank you. We now move on to the report, Community Engagement Summary Report, Draft Human Valley Recreation Plan, Agenda Number 19.019, forward slash 20. Do we have a councillor to move the motion? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Seconder, please. Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you, Councillor May. Councillor Doyle, do you have any opening remarks? Uh, yes, ma'am. I think... Um, the information in this report is valuable for a lot of other organisations and seeing how many 
um, groups there is and what they do. So I think it's a great, yeah, great report. Thank you. Yes, I agree. Um, oh, we'll be back in a moment. No, this will yes. Yeah, All right. Thank you. All right. They can see us. We we couldn't see you for a moment. <laughs> okay. All right. Has that completed your statement, um, your opening statement, Councillor Doyle? Uh, yes, it has. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, I'll now ask each councillor to make <coughs> and or ask a question. Councillor Campbell. No, thank you, Mayor. Councillor Wilson. No, thank you. Councillor Prince. Uh, no, thank you, Mayor. Councillor Lovell. No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor May. No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Newell. No comment, Mayor. Councillor Gibson. I think this is one of this is an excellent report. There's a lot a lot in it. I'm very pleased to endorse it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and look, uh, I, I agree with the comments made by Deputy Mayor Doyle and Councillor Gibson. Uh, you know, there, there are often community projects that uh, we, we need to marry up with the benefits to tourism as well. And um, certainly with a lot of the walking trails and the bike, you know, bike tracks, etc., and uh, kayaking trails, they, they are all very relevant to tourism. So it's really great to have, it's like an atlas for the Huon Valley um, recreation. And uh, I want to thank um, the team staff that um, work with Inspiring Place to deliver such a comprehensive atlas for us um, to work for and our partners. So thank you very much. Um, okay, so um, Councillor Daw, any closing comments? Um, yes, Mayor, just the fact that once now that we endorse this um, recreational plan, I think it's going to be um, so useful to um, a lot of other organisations like Bendigo Bank, looking at how many places there is that that do mm. such good things in the Yawn Valley. So well done to the director in this area and inspiring places. Thank you. Thank you. So I will put the motion and ask each councillor to vote for or against the motion. Deputy Mayor Doyle. For Mayor. Councillor Neill. For Mayor. Councillor Gibson. For Mayor. Councillor Campbell. For Mayor. Councillor Wilson. For Mayor. Councillor Prince. For Mayor. Councillor Lovell. For Mayor. Councillor O'May. For Mayor. And the Mayor is for. That's all councillors present and the motion is carried. Thank you. We now go on to the next report, the Hewan Builder Franklin Shared Pathway Feasibility Study, Agenda Number 19.020 forward slash 20. Uh, do we have a councillor to move a motion? We can. Thank you. Councillor Neil put his hand up. Sorry. <laughs> I caught his hand. Uh, sorry, second and now I'll call for Councillor Lovell. Thank you. Councillor Lovell. Uh, Councillor Neill, do you have any opening remarks? Uh, look, I thought this was an excellent, excellent report. I personally think it would be a game changer for the Huon Valley if we could get this up um, and a real asset for our valley. Uh, I'm, I think it's marvellous and the sooner we get it started. Thank you. All right. I will now ask each councillor to make a comment or have an opportunity to ask questions. Um, we go to Councillor Wilson first. Look, Mayor, when we first uh, looked at this project, Kevin Rudd was uh, actually Prime Minister. Uh, and at that time, he was throwing a lot of money about. The, uh, the cost at the time was $2.6 approximately. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get any funding for that uh, at the time. 13 years later, the cost is $24 million, uh, which is quite considerably. Uh, and the governments are not throwing money around again. But this has always been, to me, a very, very good project and it's something that I don't believe that this council should give up on at all. We must uh, actually be striving to achieve this, and uh, even if it's only a small start, 
long term, I agree with Councillor Newell, this would be a game changer for uh, the Yuan Valley in a lot of ways as far as tourism is concerned and health and well being. Thank you. Councillor Prince. Uh, yeah, look, um, if we could get this up and running, the, the benefits are phenomenal, really, as far as health and well being and environmental, they're fantastic. I do have a question if I may through you, Mayor, mm -hmm. the Director. Um, in securing funding, because this is something I get asked about a lot by a lot of people, having a feasibility study like this makes it a lot easier for us to go out and speak for funding. Is that correct? Through you, Mayor, uh, it, it, it is, because it actually shows that we've got a plan and we've scoped up the project, but also the, um, the cost-benefit analysis that's been done is also um, pretty significant to have, because then they can see that their investment into this project actually will provide other benefits to have a multiplier effect in our community. Um, yeah, thank you very much. A lot of the time I do hear people talk about, uh, you know, these things sit on shelves and gather dust, but if we don't have them, we have what we, virtually no chance of acquiring the funding for it. So when we go out to see some of this, I assume there's a bit of a risk involved that, yes, we may not get funding, but without it, we've got no chance. So I like that we're being ambitious in chasing this kind of stuff. Thank you very much. Councillor Lovell. Um, I just wanted to say that with a project like this being so large and the cost, it's so important that it be, can be done in sections. So, um, you know, we can look forward to, uh, you know, section by section getting this done um, instead of being overwhelmed by the bigger picture of that, you know, huge amount of money. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Lovell. Councillor O'May. Oh, yeah. uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, I'd just like to add to uh, to uh, what Councillor Prudence underlined earlier. Um, I take on board everything he said and Councillor Newell. At, uh, I was just wondering, is there any way that we can, I mean, we just discussed with the uh, the, the uh, recreation plan and uh, the um, avenues for tourism out of the recreational plan. Uh, it, it's of my view that this is one of the same and I was wondering uh, if we can uh, a question to yourself for the GM on on is there any way that we can amalgamate these two projects or or uh, in some way um, go with hat in hand in regards in regards to um, the benefits of uh, of recreation and the health benefits of this project as well as the mental health. Um, positives this project getting up or sections of it as councillor bird has suggested uh, I really believe it's it's one of the one of the same um, so, uh, so, so, um, so. The general, sorry sorry councillor may the general manager will be able to respond as to um, where this particular project is located within the actual strategy because we've been working on that project for a while now. You've got the page, have you referenced? Oh, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely. So um, the Director of Community Services will be able to uh, lead the discussion about where the location of the actual shared pathway project is sitting in the actual recreational study for the Human Valley. Over to you. All right, Director. Thank you, Ma'am. So on page 80, Councillor, oh, Stamp page 80 of the recreation plan, the Hillbuilder Builder Franklin Shared Pathway is actually included in there as an action um, to follow up. It does have a note against it that we do need to await the feasibility assessment for the pathway as well. So it is referenced in there, yep. um, along with some other tracks and trail opportunities as well. So this this um, this project, just like any other project, um, Councillor O'May would then need to become a key priority um, 
uh, for his council to pursue um, funding if it, if you want if the council wanted to elevate it up to a higher level because there's probably a bit more work that needs to be done um, in relation part, to it. Sorry, and that's part of Part C in the recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Yes, it is. Um, so, so it's good to hear, Councillor O'May, that it actually already is in the Huon Valley um, a recreation plan, as as you were hoping it would be. It's in there. Oh, awesome! Well, that's what I say. It uh, for yeah. me, it it uh, it touches all the dot points and um, and also the uh, the opportunity for uh, for tourism potential in. In uh, in this area, i.e., be whether it's kayaking tours or ferry boat rides back to the starting point, or there's just so many opportunities that could arise out of this proposal. Um, I really think that um, we should be um, examining all aspects in regards to going with our hat in hand for funding for this. It's a it's a major opportunity. Thank, thank you, Councillor May. Uh, Deputy Mayor Doyle? Um, just to um, go over the fact of what everyone else has said, I, I believe it's a section by section prog progress and let's hope that, that um, we can get that because overall it's a good project. So that's all for me. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Gibson? Um, I'd like to, if possible, propose an amendment, which is very minor, but it's just that council remain open to cheaper and more environmentally sensitive construction alternatives. I think this is a big investment in a flood zone. We've got climate change going to increase the, you know, the levels of flooding on the river. I'm, and uh, undermining concrete and damaging such an expensive investment, um, I think is, is a big risk. And uh, I've, I've been sort of trying to get another alternative um, up, but at this stage, I don't have one. I just would like to remain, for the council to remain open in case that's uh, a possibility in the future. Can I, can I just clarify a point with the general manager, first of all, in relation to the report? Because the report contains various different products. I think it's three different products. That's me. Um, and uh, at this point in time, um, general manager, we're not locked into no. any of those products. And if we were getting closer to actually um, getting, well, implementing, the, well, funding Even if the we project. Put up funding and some yeah, sort of final we, design would still have to be we, determined. And Okay, and we'll still need to come back to council in that regard. Um, so, um, is that so? That that does that suffice your your question? Is that this can this is this recommendation doesn't lock it's not locking it in? No, into actual materials. Um, yeah, so it doesn't do that. So we will have an well, opportunity. We already to have that are open. Okay. Yeah, and, are... and, and otherwise, I I um, think it's a fantastic project, and that, you know, I just I just think that getting that sort of money is going to be really difficult, and if we can find a cheaper way, that would be uh, might make it more possible. But we'll just keep working on that, I guess. All right. I, sorry. Just uh, thank, thank you. you. Is it a question for Councillor Gibson? Because otherwise, I need to go to Councillor Campbell first, and then I come back to you. I'll come, come back to you. Then. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, Councillor Campbell, any comments or questions? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, through to um, the Director um, of Community Services or the General Manager, um, I just noticed that um, the Pitt and Sherry report identifies Section 1 of the pathway commencing at Hewenville at the end of Cool, cool Store Road. And I'm just wondering, um, and that's the cost of the... 320,000. Um, so what is the likelihood that that, that part of the um, walkway could be initiated um, and how long, I mean, given that we are in uh, fairly dire straits with getting funding, is it likely that we may be able to get something towards that first part of the funding? 
uh, through your mayor, yep. done 300, 300 odd thousand is more achievable than a one um, big chunk of yeah. you know, 20, 20 million. So um, it's certainly more appealing to break it down, especially when um, the governments, state and federal, are looking at trying to spread funding around a whole lot of different areas to try and stimulate a lot of economies. So. Um, yeah. Yes. It is more achievable, but I can't say whether uh, you know we we would get that money in the very near future or not. But this allows us to make it a key priority project that we can put forward, um, you know, for various things like um, election strategies or any other grant program that might come up. Ah, uh, yes. Look, I, I think I would like to see that because if you look back at the uh, original. Um, you know, in back in 2007, um, what we don't want is communities saying that, you know, we get these things sort of up and running. And not that there's an expectation necessarily, but it's more about what can we try and achieve in, um, like, like the other councillors have said, that, you know, it's just achieving um, little sections at a time. And I think that's going to be the, the biggest... Um, uh, input and influence on the community and the um, and just their reaction to achieving little sections at a time. So that's probably why I'm making that um, that comment because I think um, it should be something we know we probably won't get the full amount and I just would like to see something started so that the money that goes into the the studies and the feasibility reports actually we get some return on it for the community. Thank, thank you, Councillor Campbell. Uh, before we go on to Councillor Questions, uh, there is a response to your comments made, uh, Councillor Campbell, from the Director. Oh, thanks, Mayor. I just wanted to add, Councillor Campbell, that I think you've raised a good point with Section 1. And just to add to that, I guess, with the subdivisions that are occurring over in the Cool Store Road area over the next couple of years, there will be more of a population growth in that area. So it is forming that connection between the township and a residential area and supporting the walkability of that Hindle area as well. So I think there's yeah. there's multiple avenues that we can build that base for an argument of Section 1 and plan for future funding for that. Um, and that's what's yeah. that we continue to look at options for particularly that area to start with. Yes, yeah, so just I'm sorry. following on from that, Director, just with the, um, you know, obviously the uh, subdivision that's got 52 lot, lots planned. It just seems to me that it would be quite a viable option for hopefully a little bit of funding because it's a bit of an infill development there and it would lead back into um, Huonville, which would be good. That's right, yeah. Thanks, Beck. Sure. Yeah. That's OK. The general manager would just like to make a quick comment as well. Uh, just following on from your comments, um, Councillor Campbell and um, Councillor Prince, um, we were, um, I guess, had the um, benefit of actually having our feasibility study grant funded as well. So that that was actually, yes. um, yeah, a, a benefit. So uh, you mentioned return on our investment. Uh, you know, yes, yes we, we still have to invest time and everything into actually get that grant, but at least it was grant funded because um, the state government must have saw some benefit in it to start with. So uh, developing a feasibility study tells us that um, yes, it is feasible and it will provide a number of benefits to the economy. So I think there is, you know, um, some potential there just in getting that done. It's so, interest in the outcome. I can add to the end of that as well. Mm. So, the department yeah. already asked. Yeah, good. Okay. That's yeah. Well, okay. Well, it's, a, it's a real plus to get the uh, funding because obviously, you know, the state, if they're prepared to fund, there must be some attraction for them as well. So hopefully, fingers crossed. No, thank, thank you for that. Thank you um, to our Director and General Manager for responding as well. Um, I've got three councillors that want to ask questions. Mark O'May had his hand up first, then Councillor Wolfson and then Councillor Gibson. Um, OK. Councillor O'May, you have a question? Can't hear you, sorry. Sorry, um, the question is in regards to um, Councillor Gibson's comments on uh, potential climate change and water level rises. Um, is it possible that we can have a contingency rerouting of the um, 
the track, uh, and when I say a reroute, I uh, I uh, I mean by it might have to be six foot one way, or it might have to be uh, a couple of metres higher here or there. Um, is once once we have the plan, is it possible that we um, we can still make minor alterations to the uh, to the general concept to um, include the potential uh, that Councillor Gibson's referring to? Uh, so a response is it? We're going to have a thank you, Ta. Yeah, you're correct in saying that, Councillor Romain, that as the plans continue and I guess the engineering and the route is locked in further, then that's when the considerations are going to be made into the sea level rise, inundation, um, in protected areas, all of those factors will be taken into consideration as it continues to develop. Okay. The finished pipe, yeah, pipe isn't locked in. Um, the report actually talks about how it does need to change and the potential for different heights at different levels and things like that. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, Councillor Wilson, you're, you've got a question? Yes, uh, Mayor, basically I'm just on the, the Pitt and Cherry report. If you have a thorough look through this, you'll see that it's staged all the way through. Mm -hmm. The $24 million is the Rolls Royce but there's a lot of things in between. And uh, so, as I said, it's uh, it's basically looking at it. It's a damn good report, to be quite honest. Um, but it, it, it stages it, so, and that's really what we should be looking at. Thank you. Councillor Gibson? Yes, following on from Councillor Wilson, um, the staging, I think, is, is, is the key. The question goes through to the general manager just to make sure that the corridor for the um, entire length is secure and so that as the staging happens, it's a part of the greater thing, full length. Uh, yes, yeah, Mayor. So the general uh, manager Yes, Mayor. There is a uh, section in the recommendation to allow for us to negotiate uh, with the Crown to try and uh, block in yeah. the specified areas required. That also is to allow us to stage things and to um, apply for grants as necessary. Thank you. Yeah. Good. All right. Lovely. Thank you. Okay. So um, I will just make um, my comment or ask a question. Um, beyond what everybody else has said, um, I did try and find the riverine inundation hazard mapping for it within the report. And there's lots of maps in there, um, but I couldn't find that report because I believe that there is already um, flood um, levels for 50, 2050 and 2100. So when you're thinking, yeah, thank you. So when when um, when you're looking at putting in a 20, uh, sorry, a 20 year um, gravel path versus a 40 year um, concrete path, and we already we don't have to talk about how much that costs per metre because we know what the overall project is. We've sort of talked about it. Um, I'm really keen to see that mapping, which probably goes in line with what uh, Councillor, not probably does, with Councillor Gibson and Councillor O'Mays talk about climate change, the mapping that we have available, and what does that actually look like over this design work? Yeah. And, and you, I, I, you may not have the answers today, and you might want to come back to us. And I understand that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, that mapping is available on the list. I'm not sure if you if you found it yet, but I'm happy to show you how to how to get to that if you want. It's is both the inundation layer and the 2050 and 2100 sea level rise maps are on there, and it certainly does overlap the the, the track as you'd expect being on the coastal foreshore. Um, I think it's. Um, director um, Beck spoke to before the, the Pit and Cherry report does reference those the inundation and mm -hmm. coastal erosion factors and that they've been considered in that in their proposal. Um, and obviously they, they do talk about in the final designs they need to consider things like the, the durability of the services yeah. used, the final elevation. Designs. And where you go. Yeah. Because then if you're looking at the asset management policy that we've just or the asset policy that we've just discussed, 
which talks about not putting assets in the way of where, in a, you know, like sea level rises and all this sort of stuff, then I, I just, probably we need that information sooner rather than later yeah. um, because of managing the expect. Because it is a great project, but we, we need to be able to communicate as well at the same time about where preferred paths might have been. They, they may be gone yes. within a certain period of time. So that's my only comment. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we now go to Councillor Newell. Um, do you have any closing remarks? No, look, I just think it's a great uh, project and uh, Pitt and Sherry did a great report, uh, taking a lot of things into consideration. I think it's marvellous, so it gets my support. Thank you. So I'll put the motion and we'll ask each councillor to state whether they are for or against the motion. Uh, Deputy Mayor Doyle. Yep, four, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Neil. Uh, four. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. Four, Mayor. Councillor Campbell. Four, Mayor. Councillor Wilson. Four, Mayor. Councillor Prince. Four, Mayor. Councillor Lovell. Four, Mayor. Councillor O'May. Four, Mayor. And the Mayor is four. That's all councillors present. And the motion is carried. Thank you. We now go on to the report titled Hill and Valley Community Hub Project, agenda number 19.021 forward slash 20. Do we have a councillor to move the motion? I've got Councillor Prince that's raising his hand. A seconder, please. Yep, Janet. Oh, sorry. Councillor Wilson did raise his hand. Um, thank you. So, Councillor Prince, do you have some opening comments that you'd uh, like to make? I do. This is this is actually a fantastic use of uh, responding to a crisis and a negative situation in a very positive way with what, as an idea, appears to be remarkably achievable, very cost effective, and probably, in all honesty, something that Doonville as a township is missing and has been missing for a long time. I've been looking over it for a while, trying to find something I don't like about it, just so I could not be blindsided by how good I think this idea is, but I honestly can't. Um, I like that it's a bit a bit vague, it's a bit flexible, and it's got lots of different options and growth potential in a lot of different directions. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit uh, dumbstruck by this idea. I actually think it's fantastic. So. OK, thank you. All right, so now I'll ask each councillor to make a comment and or ask a question. Uh, we have Councillor Lovell. Um, I'd just like to say that I'm really interested to um, see this explored um, for the Hume Valley community. Thank, thank you. So, um, Councillor O'May. Uh, well, I can't really add anything other than what uh, Councillor Prince has just tabled. Uh, that was an amazing uh, overview of my thoughts. Uh, Councillor Prince, you hit the nail right on the head there. And uh, I fully endorse uh, the project. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Doyle? Um, yes, um, Mayor. Um, I, I think this is a great um, initiative as well. And like the others have said, that the flexibility is great. Um, we've had some incidents um, where children get off school buses um, over at the bus stop there in, is it Skinner Drive? And, um, you know, they've been frightened. So through different reasons, it'd be really good for them to be able to have somewhere to go when they, when they feel like that. So I'm all for the project. Thank you. Councillor Newell. Yep, very impressive workshop and uh, great... Great proposal. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. Yes, I'm a supporter of the project. I'd, there's only one thing that I would like to include, if possible, and that's, um, I mean, it, the, the nature of it being flexible and uh, open is, is good and it's necessary, but it's also necessary to identify clearly what the goals are. So it'd be nice to have 
that the 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 more precise goals um, around community cohesion, I guess, um, and some KPIs to measure success of that uh, attached to to the project. Thank you, Councillor Campbell. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, I'd just like to say that um, I think there's been a lot of um, good options, you know, that have been explored. And uh, I think that, you know, having um, chaired the last Arts and um, Culture Committee, uh, there was obviously a lot of um, support for um, a community-based um, opportunity. Um, I suppose the one thing I just wanted to ask was uh, when it talks about the ongoing engagement and involved level, if I could just ask the director, I like the idea of it being a community-led approach. Um, I'm just wondering in uh, point 25, it said that the engagement on the council decision will be at inform level. So I'm just not quite sure why there's two levels there. Just clearing that. Yeah, so uh, the director will respond. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Councillor Campbell, so the, the decision that is going to be made here tonight obviously will be informed to the community. So there's been no prior engagement on the decision, but the ongoing engagement on the use and the feedback um, of the operations of the hub would be at the involved level. Suggestions for improvements, things like that. So that's where there's two. On the actual decisions informed going forward, that community-led involvement on once it's established what it looks like, what the activities are, how it's going, would be involved. Yeah. Okay. And just one one comment. Um, I suppose. Uh, look, I think it's um, you know you've put a lot of work into it. I suppose my only concern is that you know it came on the 11th of August and and now it's come as a report and don't I'm not in any way derogatory about the report um, or the recommendation but it's just a bit concerning I think that we've closed something down and you know there was such a um, backlash and I just I would like to have seen it maybe come on um, for community engagement um, you know at this time when people can really engage with what they want um, I know that you've had a lot of discussions probably with stakeholders and that sort of thing so it's 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 certainly nothing. Um, I'm not being critical, but I'm just saying. Look, I just felt it came quite quickly, and I wasn't expecting it to come come where I had to make a decision on it. But I like I like a lot of the ideas in principle, and uh, thanks for all the work you put into it. Thank you, Captain Sam. May if I if I could comment, this probably um, came from me, uh, Councillor Campbell, um, driving this. Um, fairly quickly because um, I, I am aware that we've got an empty space um, in the uh, CBD and, you know, the, the messages that sends and, you know, having closed the, the visitor centre and we had this idea um, um, bubbling away. So I guess I wanted to push it through uh, fairly quickly to make sure that we're utilising that space and getting the benefits that we can for the community as soon as possible. So I'll, I'll take that as... Um, feedback that it probably came a bit quick, but I certainly did drive it fairly quickly. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, General Manager. Thank you, General Manager. Okay, Councillor Wilson. Look, the first thing I want to say about this report, uh, Mayor, is what a very professional report has been from the Director. It really has. It's been very thorough. A hub in uh, Univille has been uh, required for many, many years, and I think we're, we're all gained from this, the community will gain. Uh, <laughs> The community service team and the community, it'll bring them closer together. And I think that's something that's been very much lacking in the town of Yonville itself for many, many years. And I think this is only going to help. You know, if we were to, to look at trying to lease that building at this stage, for God's sake, you know, leasing figures at the moment are anywhere between 15 and 50% down uh, because of COVID-19. So I think this is a very smart move on the part of council. And I think the council will gain, even though we've got a bit of backlash a fair bit of backlash from the visitor information centres. I think we'll gain a few pats on the back because of this one. I really do. It's something the community is desperately need. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Um, I just have a couple of comments. Um, look, I 
I agree. I think it's a great interim solution. And um, thank you for staff for actually working with partners to see whether that's what they wanted to as well. And then with all the feedback that you've got from the COVID surveys as well, that's helped initiate that thinking. So I think, I think it's a great interim solution. And I, I commend you as well for um, putting forward the community engagement level at Involve because you did want this to be a community-led project as far as what the long-term solution would be of the site. So I think that's a great result. That's really getting them involved in the conversation and being represented. Um, okay. Um, I just, in, in the recommendation, and I suppose in parts of the report, it talks about with the involved, like the involved level of community engagement that it seems to focus only even, even at the long-term solution, it seems to focus only at the lower level of the building and not the full building. And I, I with the amount of uh, growth that we're having in the Huon Valley as well, and I suppose not putting any, just like, we don't want to put any restrictions on the creative energy of what occurs in the interim period. I, I would have liked to see no sort of restrictions placed on the community, brainstorm what could happen in the whole building. Um, that's, that's a comment. Um, and I suppose that's um, also driven by, um, the, in, in, a, in number 20, for example, um, there's a comment about, um, you know, staff, what would, what, would, what would happen to the staff if they weren't able to occupy that top floor? And we all have different experiences in our in our workplaces. And and I have I, I feel that there are other solutions to um, whole teams occupying buildings, bricks and mortar. And um, just very quickly, one of those experiences was I was working for a nursing service. We um, in one contract we had to expand 30% of our workforce. And the employer, the board, and the CEO had to work out, do we buy more bricks and mortar and invest $900,000 to a million dollars? Or do we come up with another solution? And what they did was they came up with another solution, and the solution was the nurses all started from home and they finished at home. And the concerns about them not meeting as teams and gelling as teams was resolved because two to three times a week they would meet as a team, but within a cafe. In a, in a private meeting room within a cafe. So I, I, I think with a lot of research and looking at other models that are out there, um, we have the ability as well to, to modernise in that way, in a, in a workforce way, but that's a discussion for another time. I just, I just wanted to make that comment. Uh, I thought it was relevant, but I, I really love the fact that you're looking at pilot studies and it's, it's an exciting project. and. They're the soul. It, I can see there will be a soul that will be grown as a result of it. So I want to congratulate you and your team for seeing that opportunity. Thank you. Um, okay, so we now go um, to Councillor Prince for any closing comments. Um, yeah, probably just briefly, yet again. Amazing idea. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to see how it plays out over the years. Um, and it's certainly something that I will always be able to say. I think looking at it, I'm going to be proud for a long time that I was on council when this came through because it looks like a ripper. Um, and the, the service multiplier and the value add to the community is going to outweigh dollars by the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, I think, over the long term. This is going to pay for itself in benefits to a lot of different people exponentially. So amazing work. Thank you, that's great. Okay, so um, I'll put the motion or ask each councillor to vote either for or against the motion. Uh, Deputy Mayor Doyle? For, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Neil? For. Councillor Gibson? For, Mayor. Councillor Campbell? For, Mayor. Councillor Wilson. Why? Councillor Prince. 
Come. Cancel la O. Come. Cancel la mai. Come. And the mayor is for, that's all councillors present, and the motion is carried. Welcome to your new home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so it's that time again to advise that council is about to go into closed council. Um, thank you very much to those that were viewing tonight, and uh, we will see you next month. Thank you very much.